There's a bad echo here. Again, if whoever is using their computers as well, is make sure that you also have your speakers and your microphone muted. The time being 9.30, I call this meeting of the Public Works and Highways Committee to order. As chair of the uh, House Public Works and Highways Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, in accordance with House Rule 67 and the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. This is a public hearing on House Bill 25 with a full committee work session to follow. Please note that there is no physical location for members of the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that all members of the committee and select legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting you, through the Zoom electronic meeting platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting via the Zoom platform or by telephone. All necessary access information has been made available in the House calendar and through the electronic calendar on the General Court website. The notice for this meeting complies with House rules and with RSA 91A. Anyone who has a problem accessing the meeting should call 271-3600 or email hcs at leg.state.nh.us. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. I want to introduce the staff that are on the meeting assisting us, Brad Greenland, committee researcher, and Christopher Shea of the LBA. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let us start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states they're present, please also state whether there's anything with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Mr. Clerk, if you would call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Graham. Present in the committee room. Representative McConkie. Representative McConkie. Representative Mills is here in, in the committee room. Representative Samero. So I'm here in my office conference room. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir, we can. Representative Fidolfi. Representative Fidolfi. Here in, my, in Hillsborough, my house. Thank you. Representative Newton. Yes, I'm here. I'm in Rochester at my house, and my wife is in the house somewhere. Thank you. Representative Blasek. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Here in my office alone. Thank you, Representative Kaczynski. Representative Kaczynski. Representative Kolanski. Kaczynski is here. Thank you, Representative Kaczynski. Representative Kolanski. Representative Thompson. Here in the committee room. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Uh, present in the committee room. Thank you, Representative Edgar. Present at home. My wife, Kathy's in the house. Thank you. Representative Evil. Home alone in New London. Thank you, Representative Jack. Here in the committee room. Thank you, Representative Abbott. Here in Hensdale, but myself. Thank you, Representative Faulkner. Here in Swansea at home. Oh, my wife is in the other room. Thank you, sir. Representative Newman. 
Yes, here in Nashua. My husband is in the house. I'm present. Thank you, Representative Eaton. This is Representative Grassi, who's replacing Representative Eaton. Thank you, Representative Grassi. Representative Peterson. Present at home alone in Nashua. Representative Query. Present uh, at home in Manchester alone. Thank you, Representative Bunker. Present at home in Exeter. My wife Dawn is elsewhere in the house. Thank you. Thank you, the attendance is complete, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I will now open the hearing on House Bill 25 and act making appropriations for capital improvements. And I'll ask the prime sponsor to introduce the bill and ask the clerk to take the gavel because I have the prime sponsor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, I am Representative John A. Graham, Hillsborough District 7, which is the town of Bedford. I would like to introduce um, House Bill 25A, an act making appropriations for capital improvements. What we have in front of us is what the governor proposed. Um, we will be hearing testimony from various people in support or opposition and that it will be our job to make sure that the needs of the state are met as we go forward with making any deletions, additions, or changes to what the governor has proposed. <clears throat> and with that, um, I will not take any questions at this time. We can make discussions during our, uh, our work sessions and executive sessions on, on the bill. Um, and with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I will take the gavel back. You will. Thank you. Um, it has been a long-standing practice within the Public Works and Highways Committee that the Chairman is the prime sponsor of House Bill 25 every biennium, but he also then becomes a member of the committee able to uh, participate in questioning anybody who wants to um, testify or the rest. Uh, it is because all I have done with this particular piece of legislation is bring forward what the governor has asked us to look at. With that, <clears throat> I will say who's here and wants to speak. Um, I do not see um, Representative Morgan had asked to speak, but I do not see him on here. Um, Representative Brooke, um, if you could bring her forward. I am, and yes, good, good morning. Good morning. And Representative Brooke is testifying in opposition to the bill that is currently before us. Before you start, if I can make one comment, uh, Representative. For those of you who are uh, attending this virtually from members of the public, if you wish to testify, please electronically raise your hand. It would be helpful for those of us who are trying to manage who is going to speak or not speak. Thank you. Representative Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm Jackie Groda. I am um, a state representative representing District 24, the towns of Rye and Newcastle. Um, first, I would like to clarify, I don't, I'm not opposed to the bill. Um, I didn't know quite how to state my position because I would like right now the, um, the, the uh, coastal flooding model as proposed by DES is not in the bill. And I'm, my testimony, um, well, I sent a letter to you, I hope that you received it, which uh, clarified the importance of that, that model to the seacoast. And I just want to stress that because this is a dynamic model and includes um, 
how restrictions like bridges and canals and estu not canals, estuaries would affect the um, flooding on the seacoast during a, um, a weather situation. I think it's important to know that the seacoast would not be affected uniformly. But some areas of the seacoast would be affected at a greater significance. So it allows us to look at the seacoast as a whole rather than a piecemeal effort, which would also help if we needed to design, when we need to design roads and um, and it, it, it uh, allows for us to do that and maintain a sustainable natural resource that is not only a, a home for our residents and uh, their livelihood, it's also an important tourist destination for the, for the state. And I just am here to see if you have any questions. I don't really feel I need to spend a lot of time with you unless you have questions for me. I don't wanna, I know how, how long these hearings can last. Uh, thank you, Representative. <clears throat> Just one comment. I was unable, and I think several of the other members were unable to open uh, the attachment that you sent with your uh, written testimony. And I tried several different uh, platforms and apps and could not get it open. I will reset. I will resend it. Thank you. Are there any questions from members of the committee? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. Tell you what we're going to do. Brad, did you have something? Tell you what we're going to do here for a minute. Um, I have no other hands raised. The only other person who indicated that they wanted to um, testify um, is not on. Um, yeah, she does testify now. Okay. Um, so we will wait about five minutes just. Because this is a Zoom platform, people may be having a moment to, to hook up. Um, I would hate to cut anybody off by closing the public hearing so quickly. Um, I did expect a few more people to talk um, at this hearing. Um, but if not, we're, it is, I have uh, 943. I will give it seven minutes for other people to come on and then see if there's not, I will close the public hearing and we'll go into our work session. Thank you all. So we're not in recess. We're not in recess. Yeah. We're just taking a break. Well deserved. Well deserved. Break. <laughs> They're over subscribed or, or there's nobody. Nope. You usually see more comment than this, at least in past years. Yeah, five or six people. I fully expected. Um, a couple of people who sent emails. Yeah. Um, the agencies that people wanted to ask would be that one o'clock. Okay. And they're all still planning to show up, right? All of them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't too bad this morning. I've never taken so long as cement trucks in my life. Okay. I'm tell traffic is building. Yeah. yeah.
that. So. No, I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, it is because you, you don't know, because sometimes it takes me five minutes and some will screw it. Sometimes it's just me. <clears throat> yeah. you, you need an IT person. I do, I have. <laughs> <laughs> when I opened this up today, what was there? This is my wife's picture, and I thought, that's her. <laughs> So I prefer to be here to meet, but it is so difficult to see that screen. Well, no, that's, that's yeah, that's why it's so you know, if anybody wants to see additional stuff, and it's even hard to see unless they try to do like that. But it's also difficult to see if anybody has their oh, yeah. Ready. Yep. So who's got the car now? Or, or you the car? No, I told Brent I went to Sullivan Tire and they uh, got it right in. It took them 20 minutes. All you have to do is get the windshield fixed now. Now the windshield's got to be replaced. I knew I should have brought my truck. Marty, is it possible to go to uh, speaker view when we go back on? I just, I, I can't, yeah. I can't see where we are. Thank you so much. Appreciate you doing it. Seems like since there's only this many people who show up, they could move that screen up to the witness. Um, stand. I would commit, I would commit to the Oh, I think we Rather than tear it down, we set it up every day. Did they ask your permission to be here, Mr. Chairman? The speaker took all rooms up to the person. I always, always like when they'd ask me, like, I had a choice. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to let you know that there is an individual that's, that's trying to get on now. And uh, I just thought I would uh, let you know that. So that I know it's getting very close to the, to the time period that you had mentioned the closing. So, uh, what a tight ship. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'd like to call the, the meeting back um, to order. Um, again, I would remind everybody who is um, attending or members of the public, if you wish to speak, please raise your um, virtual hand or if you're calling on the telephone. Um, so indicate. Right now, I have nobody here 
waiting to testify or have their hand raised to testify on House Bill 25. However, Representative Anchor just mentioned that he knows of somebody um, who is trying to get on to testify. Um, I'll give that a couple minutes. I don't want to cut any member of the public off from a public hearing. Um, we do give those kinds of courtesies when we're in the state house if somebody's out in the hallway waiting to come in or something like that. But I'm not going to wait all morning. Representative Baker, is that uh, the Honorable Nancy Stiles trying to get on? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, it is. Uh, uh, former Senator Nancy Stiles is trying to get on. She indicates to me that it's it says uh, she's it's telling her that it's closed, uh, Mr. Chairman. She's the only one having that problem, so we will not adjourn and reschedule it. Okay. There are there are at least nine attendees. There were twelve at one point. Um, some have dropped off. Um, while the, the script does say the public cannot get on, that is the entire public, not one or two. Uh, mm -hmm. and, yep, good. I will give her another couple of minutes. We do have, uh, I was provided a copy of her written testimony, but by an email, we, I would read that if she's not on in a minute or two. And we will move forward. Representative Graham, if um, if she's just trying to sign up to testify, then the registration for that would be closed, but she should be able to access it through the public link. Um, if um, someone's able to send me her email, I can always send her the public link and see if she can come in that way. If you would, and, and Michael, if Representative Edgar, if you are in touch with her, tell her to go to the house tower and click the link that's there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. She uh, she was trying to do it that way. Uh, if if you received her um, uh, testimony, um, would it be possible for you to read it? I can't find a copy myself. I know it was very brief. Um, I believe that would uh, handle the uh, the you know, situation. Uh, I can. I, I I have it, and and I will read it for for the record, and also uh, it came in late yesterday evening, um, so I, it may not have gotten out to everybody yet. If not, I will make sure that every member gets it uh, forwarded to them. Um, it's a letterhead from the Hampton Beach Area Commission, uh, dated March 15, 2021. Dear Representative Graham and Capital Budget Committee members, for the record, I am Nancy Stiles Hampton. On behalf of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, HBAC, I write in support of DES's request for funding the Coastal Flooding March model proposed in HB 25. HBAC is in the process of updating its master plan as directed by New Hampshire's RSA 226216 dash J colon three uh, comma two. And in particular, we are working on the environmental components of that plan, having just completed the transportation component update. This past February, HBAC hosted a symposium on coastal resilience with 100 virtual attendees in which there were 13 presenters from different organizations, local, state, and federal 
that have been studying our coastal issue. It would be most important to have our New Hampshire DES holding the organizational lead to direct the modeling as we move forward to protect our precious resources. This will assist HVAC as we draft language for this update as we live with water while protecting our businesses, safe properties, and residents. I respectfully ask that you develop a capital budget this year, funding that, uh, that includes funding for DES modeling. Thank you for all that you do to protect New Hampshire's beautiful resources and for the citizens of New Hampshire. Nancy Stiles, Chase, Chair HVAC. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. As I said, I will make sure that copy gets out to everybody. Representative Edgar, have a question? I, I had a comment to you, sir. Uh, th thank you very much, Chairman, for reading that. We appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm here for, Representative Edgar. <laughs> no, we don't want to cut any, any member of the public off from, from any of that. Um, despite the, the Zoom nature of these hybrid meetings, we do want to make sure that the public has the opportunity to comment. I had no one else who had signed up previously to testify on House Bill 25. I see nobody who is in attendance uh, with their hand raised wishing to um, testify. Last call for anybody to, of the public who wishes to testify on House Bill 25A, uh, make uh, an act to make an appropriation for capital improvements. Going once, seeing none, the public hearing on House Bill 25 is closed. And as calendar suggested, we are going to go immediately into our work session for the committee. At one o'clock, those agencies that we have asked to come back and, and answer some additional questions will be here to answer those questions. Um, it, it is not a full blown presentation from them, it is to answer specific questions that any of you may have. First up, what I would like to do is last Friday, there was a subcommittee that met uh, concerning lapse extension requests that was chaired by Representative Marty Jack. Um, and he has prepared a report which went out to all of the members, but I'd like him to go over that report for the edification, not just of the members, but also anybody who is attending this uh, hearing virtually. Representative Jack. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to come over here so that I'm on camera. Uh, as the Chairman mentioned, on Friday the 12th, we held a subcommittee with uh, myself and Representatives Mills, Newman, and Query. Uh, we took uh, all testimony and presentations from some agencies. We took other information uh, by email from other agencies. And the purpose of this is two calls. It's to go through the lapse extension list in section 14 of House Bill 25 and identify any items that are there that are complete and can be removed. And also identify any items that are missing from there and need to be added. And we also take testimony on the projects that are complete that have funds remaining and we are able to reuse that money. Representative Jack, if you could suspend for a moment. Is everybody able to hear Representative Jack? Shake your head yes or no. Okay, thank you. It's, with your back to those of us at the front, it's, you're muffled, that's all. But we can't make out what you're saying. Continue. All right. So I will just, uh, I, I did send this out in written form to the committee. Uh, so I will just go through what we found in section 14. We delete line 55. We delete line 109. And there are 488,000 in liquor funds remaining in that appropriation. There, uh, delete line 134. Delete line 138. And there are 47,793 in general funds remaining. 
Delete line 140, delete line 141, delete line 187, and delete line 190 with 19,646 of general funds remaining. Uh, we found two items that are missing. Uh, we need to extend the appropriation that started in 2013 for unspecified minor military construction for the Adjutant General. And also for the Adjutant General, we need to extend the appropriation that began in 2015 for readiness center design. Now, during the presentations, we learned that two agencies were requesting that their funds be repurposed. The Department of Environmental Services requested a repurpose of 161890 through the Coastal Flooding Monitoring Modeling Project, and they supplied uh, proposed language. Uh, I don't believe we'll actually need to use that. The Department of Safety requested a repurpose of $74,000 to Fire Academy HVAC upgrade. Uh, now, it's important to note these are Fire Academy funds. Uh, the fire apparatus is ordered, so we know the cost of it. Uh, it's not yet been delivered. Uh, they had another project to do the HVAC upgrade that was short of funds because the bid came in above what the amount that was appropriated. Uh, if we were to do this, uh, it would enable us to get the fire truck which is on order, and it would also enable them to have enough money uh, in fire funds to do the HVAC project. Uh, the LBA recommends amending the original appropriate, leaving the lapse extension for these funds and amending the purpose, which would be in House Bill 25 of 2019, uh, section S, uh, Roman 15, and B to read Fire Academy new truck and HVAC upgrade for one million two hundred thousand dollars. And uh, I will know. I will since these since these are fire funds and and uh, it enables them to finish the project. Uh, this is my personal opinion. I will recommend that the committee adopt this and and include that language in House Bill twenty five. Uh, the next item would be that we uh, located $2.233,117 uh, in general fund appropriations from completed projects that are available for repurpose. And I won't go through all the, all the agencies. It's in the written report. Uh, the, the biggest item is the Department of Administrative Services at $1.7 and uh, when it comes time, the committee amendment will repurpose these funds to other uses. Uh, and uh, you could look in prior capital budgets to see how that's done. We did find one error in one of the agency presentations, uh, but uh, that's immaterial to House Bill 25. So that completes the report. Thank you, Representative Jack. Um, are there any questions to, from members of the committee on the report just given? Marty, just so I'm making sure, on that final statement you made, <clears throat> there is $2,233,718 that um, projects are completed and general fund um, from federal fund appropriations that can be repurposed for other projects as we go forward through this budget. Uh, that's correct. The uh, Chris Shea from the Legislative Budget Assistance Office uh, produced those numbers and I went through and manually reconfirmed from the information that was supplied by the agencies that those, those figures are correct. Thank you. And I agree with them to, to the to, dollar. To you and all of the members who participated on that uh, last Friday, I know that it is time consuming, exhaustive to try to pin down all of the agencies on what they do with prior appropriations, but it is a useful exercise um, having done it myself. And I do appreciate that. At this point, no questions of Representative Jack. I would ex 
accept the motion that the report of the subcommittee be approved. So moved. I'll second that motion. Moved by Representative Thompson, uh, seconded by Representative Cloutier that the report of the subcommittee be approved. And that includes his comments about um, the agencies, the couple agencies that, like the Fire Academy, that one of the resources, the money uh, would be part of uh, our House Bill 25. We will decide what to do with the uh, two plus million um, as we go forward. But I would accept that um, motion to remain seconded. Any questions? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. If you're in favor of accepting the subcommittee report, you will say aye. If you're opposed, you'll say nay. A majority vote is required. Representative McConkey. Aye. The clerk votes yes. Representative Salero. Yes, aye. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Aye. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Aye. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Aye. Representative Van de Castillo. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes, and thank you to the subcommittee. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Yes. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Eaton. Yes. I'm sorry. Representative, Representative Grassy votes yes. Thank you, sir. Representative Peterson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bumper. Yes. Representative Bumper. Yes. Sorry. And Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, the vote is 20 0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. But for the new members on the committee, um, this is not a new procedure. We have done this several times in the past. But at this point, we usually just take a voice vote about accepting the, the subcommittee report. But because of the, the nature of our meetings now, anything like that, as I said in the script, does have to be uh, done on a roll call. With that, we have some, some time. Um, our intention today is to go through agency by agency. Um, I would suggest that we use the, uh, what we are going to use, I'm not going to suggest it, uh, the, the compare report uh, prepared by the LBA, dated 3 1. Um, we started using this on our last work session. And we will begin and go through them all after we have heard from the agencies. If there are any changes, we can go back to them, uh, back to uh, each uh, section. But if we don't start moving forward, we're not going to get an amendment done in time uh, for the deadlines that we have because as we change anything, um, and with all of the committees having the same suspense now of uh, 1st of April, 
uh, uh, legislative services is going to be busy with amendments. Uh, we have the LBA and and a, a very dedicated staff at the uh, legislative services, but it still is a time consuming process. The, the other chairman who is who have been chairman of city here nodding their heads. Okay, first up. Uh, Department of Administrative Services for a total of 24,225,000. Uh, is there any discussion on their request? Comments? Raise your hand if you want to talk. And, and Representative Evil, and I, I will say that this is a work session. We're going to be a little less formal. If I call you by your first name, um, don't be offended. And people listening, it's not because we don't get along. If I don't, I, I just, just the way it works. All right, Karen. Okay, John. Um, I, I just want to say that since the uh, the commissioner of DOIT is coming in later, um, uh, I will be asking him, my plan is to ask him about the uh, 5.1 million appropriation for the IT. Okay, as I said, I'd like to we can put an asterisk next to that one, subject to what the, the commissioner of DOIT says, but I'd like to just put that asterisk but approve all of the rest of that. Thank you. Yes, any objection? Under admit, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Under, uh, uh, is that McConkey? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And we're, I apologize, we're under administrative services? Yes. Was there, was there a discussion that I missed on item 23, uh, statewide emergency uh, fund 2023? With a surplus of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, if I remember correctly, during testimony to possibly reducing that one point five uh, million. Uh, Representative Jack, was there any money left in the emergency uh, fund under DAS? Did they provide you any information about prior? Mr. Shea. Uh, thank you, Rep. Sam Graham. Um, the Department of Administrative Services provided the committee through me a um, memo that showed what they had for emergency funds. I can show that to you if you'd like. Yes, please. So you should be able to see it. And what they've provided for you is with the appropriation, what they've spent the money on, the various projects. So in the capital budget for 2021, the current um, budget that we're in, there was an appropriation of $1.5 million of which they've spent 819 on the six projects listed. And there's a balance remaining of $680,000. They've um, completely spent the amount that was carried forward from the 1819 budget that was $500,000 and that went towards the Concord steam conversion. <clears throat> so that, that's the information they provided on the emergency um, fund that they have, the statewide emergency fund. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you so much for bringing that up on the screen. So it, it would appear that um, steam project is complete. Uh, and that there's a balance of 819. Mr. Chairman, would it be appropriate to uh, speak of reducing um, the 1.5 million to 1 million? It, it is appropriate and the committee can do whatever we want with the numbers that the governor has provided, understanding that if you, if when we do things like that, there may be risk associated with it. Um, okay. 
thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate the fact that uh, the state is self-insured um, and I would like to see that there's a, a healthy balance there. Um, and I, I'm suggesting that we reduce the 1.5 million uh, by $500,000 so that we might possibly meet the needs of some critical uh, roofs and so forth. Uh, and it would appear that it would leave um, 1.819 in that fund. So I don't know if I need to do that as a motion or for conversation. Conversation at the moment. Thank There's you, sir. 680 left, the way I'm reading this. Um, oh, I, I, I apologize, 680. Sorry, um, Mr. Chair. The other one has been fully spent, the yep. way I, I'm reading that right. Am I reading that You're right, Mr. Shea? You are. Um, so there's $680,000 remaining from the appropriation made in 2021 for uh, yep. funds. We make that motion, it would still leave them 1.68 and change. For Thank you. Recognize the Representative Make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would make a motion uh, to reduce line 23 statewide emergency fund from the governor's proposal of $1.5 million uh, to now become uh, $1 million. For a second. A second. Seconded by Representative Top. This is a strong vote. Uh, it is not final. It's, there is no um, nothing final until we have the completed amendment to House Bill 25. But we have in the past, and we will continue to do it. Um, so our votes on each agency as we're going forward, and line items that we may want to change. Um, again, normally we would need to do this with a show of hands or. Uh, Wait, folk. However, given the nature, <clears throat> for to call the roll. Any questions or comments, Representative Flutie? Yeah, so this is just a straw vote. If we did this, we could revisit this, right? We can I, revisit it. I'm struck. I think I'd be willing to do it for now, but I want to see what else. You know, because I know we got a lot of projects. So, but if we, you know. And I don't know how the rest of the member I was committing to. So I think I will support it for now, but I could reserve the right to make a change my mind later. Representative Evil. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to clarify. So the emergency fund really is the emergency fund and it's a backup fund. So if there are calamities, they, they can immediately have access to monies to repair them. Correct. And the fact that we uh, self-insure, we, we have to have that. Uh, our, our, we don't self-insure everything, but we need to have our uh, ability, a million dollars deductible, I think it is. Yes. Um, but there have been times in the past where we had a, um, a building that, that had uh, severe damage due to a storm and we had to spend money quickly to fix it um, and that's why we continue to put this kind of money into uh, an emergency fund and we continue it from by to by just so that we can but it is for emergencies and if we need to do it use it for something else they have to come before the legislators either standing or a statutory committee to do that um, thank you. Uh, I, I plan to support this at this point, um, but I would guess that DAS had some of the problems other agencies have had in expending funds as needed because of COVID. So anyway, thank you very much. Any other comments or questions on this motion to reduce uh, statewide emergency fund $1.5 million to $1 million? Mr. Chairman. 
So as I understand it, that's going to add the 680,000 to the million. Yeah. So what, we're, going to, what, what, we're actually what, increasing the amount they want that they'll have in the fund. As uh, they, they were hoping to have over 2 million. Which, which oh, all right. Okay. Save, because if you extend the lapse of 680, uh, and give them 1.5, then they have two over two for emergency funding. What is the history of that then? That um, thank you. We have continued in the past. Some years we've only given them a million, some of 1.5. It depends on what calamities hit the state and the state buildings. Um, and one year there was a building collapse. That we had to shore up walls and stuff, which was a, a warehouse. Um, it was useful to get it done quickly. Um, and they do have to, when they start doing some of it, they have to report. Is my memory wrong? Or did we not ask someone in one of the um, department hearings to look at the, the cost of having that million dollar deductible? What the difference was. I don't remember which agency it was, but I know we asked someone to come back to us and tell us why it was a million dollar deductible and what the difference in the cost of the insurance would be to drop that. I'll try to remember the answer, and I don't think we got verification. It would have been. We didn't at the time. Mr. Chairman? Yes. We did ask the question, and someone was reporting back, and I apologize. I can't tell you. I can't even. Chairman, yeah, looking back at the 2019 capital budget, originally, as I under read it, this is part of the LBA information, the governor requested uh, two two million two hundred fifty thousand. We cut it in the House to one point five million, and the Senate went along with it, and they've got extra money. So I'm willing to support this at least for now, based on past experience, and hopefully the past experience will continue in this budget. So well, that's one reason why I'm willing to cut this uh, by half a million dollars. See no further questions, so I'll roll please, Mr. Court, I need to reduce that to one million dollars. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative McConkey. Aye. Representative Mills votes EA. Representative Samaro. Aye. Representative Fidolfi. Yeah, yes. Representative Newton. Aye. Representative Blason. Representative Boards. Aye. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Aye. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Uh, yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Aye. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Yes. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Representative Graham. Yes. Thank you all. 20 0. Uh, <clears throat> At our last work session, we dealt with the Department of Agriculture, Markets, and Food for $180,000 for uh, our building at the Eastern States Exposition. Everybody was okay with it at that point. Anybody want to change their mind? See, nobody does. I would like to bring up, before we go on to corrections, one large new project. Um, that is the attorney from Ports and Harbors, $1.5 million to the attorney in Basin. Um, I would accept the motion that we include that money 
in this capital budget. Mr. Chairman? Do you need a second to that or to make I, I can't make the motion. Okay, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> we'd like to make the motion to include uh, $1.5 million uh, to add the uh, late uh, entry project of the turning basin uh, in light of the importance to our economy. I'll, I'll second. second that. Okay. But, Mr. Chairman, if I could second that, please. I hear, I hear it. It's been moved and seconded that we add one point uh, five million dollars to the budget for the turning basin at uh, Fort Smith Harbor. And then this leverages uh, several million millions of dollars in February from the Corps of Engineers who will actually be doing the work. But we do have to have our match for that. We had some previously, but uh, the four uh, came in with an additional uh, requirement for another 1.5 million. And I would like to ask everybody to support that. I will be voting yes because. We need to keep our harbor operational with larger ships coming in. Representative Edgar. Oh, yes, Mr. Chairman. You have your hand raised. Oh, okay. I, I didn't take it down from when I was trying to make the motion. Okay. Oh, okay. Any, any comments on, on this edition? We heard from Mr. Marconi about the need. Um, I thank you all that his request specifying how much in federal funds was at risk if we do not do this. Um, and we, I wish to thank our congressional delegation for getting the quarter off of uh, their, uh, out from behind their desk, let's put it that way, to actually get this done. Um, but we need to match it or it's not going to get done at the time. With that said, this book can call the roll on adding 1.5 million. Representative McConkey. Aye. Clerk votes, yes. Representative Samaro. Yes. Representative Fidolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Lysick. Representative Boards. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kolanski. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Vanda Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Uh, yes, and I have to leave the meeting temporarily. I'll be back. Thank you. Representative Newman. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Grassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Vote passes 19 0. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. At this time, I would accept the motion that the report that we approved from uh, the subcommittee on last extension, there is 1.7. $5 million left over from the Department of Administrative Services. I, I would ask for a motion that 1.5 million of that be used to pay for the turning basin, which would make a net new appropriation for this of zero. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Representative Jack moved it. Yep. 
Uh, Representative McConkey, Secretary, any, any discussion on this? As you, what we are doing with this motion, if it is approved, and makes it in not the final version of House Bill 25, is meeting this critical need with money that had been appropriated previously that we will repurpose for this vital project. Any questions or comments? Well, Mr. Chairman, we're just repurposing money for the turning basin we're right. taking it out of the Department of Administrative Service. There was uh, one point of out, of lapses. out of their laps. Well, out, of the, out of their laps. Okay, the laps is from the previous budget, right? From the previous budget. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Seeing no further comments. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative McConkey. Aye. Clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Aye. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Vandy Castile. Representative Clutia. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. He took off. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Brassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. And, and Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, vote passes 18-0. Thank you. Again, this is a strong vote um, subject to our final approval with the amendment uh, to House Bill 25, but we will move on. Second up is the Department of Corrections. Their total under the government's proposal is $11,885,000 of general funded funding. Any questions about any of the individual items on there. Representative McConkie. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to make a motion to add uh, two projects on here that were not uh, previously funded by the governor. If, would this be the appropriate time? This would be the appropriate time. All right. Mr. Chairman, I would, I would move that we, I believe my numbers are correct here, add 139,345. I think, I think if you look at what they requested, their next two priorities were um, door at the men's prison for 200,000 and closed custody unit for $300,000. Step of five items. And then we can get into how we might want to pay this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the correction. Knowing how important it is for our guests to have doors at work and the people that are there to have doors at work, I would like to uh, add at whatever process it would be $200,000 um, for that purpose. And second item would be uh, the custody, close the, I don't know the pronoun. Close custody closed custody unit uh, for $300,000. And looking at their presentation, those were their next two priorities from, from the department. I believe so, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. I will second that motion. Been moved and seconded that to the Department of Corrections, <clears throat> we add two projects. One is doors at the men's prison for $200,000. That's not that they don't have doors and they need to be worked on. Uh, and the second project for the close custody unit for 300000 a total of 500000 be added to this bottom line if we approve those two new projects. And I will, 
ask for any comments or questions from anybody at this point. Say none. Chair. For the straw poll. Representative McConkey. Aye. The clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Yes. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasick. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Andy Castillo. Representative Clunier. Uh, yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Evil. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Not back yet. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes, Mr. Chairman, my camera has stopped working. I don't know what the problem is. I'll try to reboot when I get a chance here, but I vote yes. Representative Grassi, that's fine. As long as we can hear you. Your portrait looks great. Stronghold. <laughs> Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, the vote passes 18-0. <clears throat> the motion passes, I'm sorry. Um, looking at the, the subcommittee that uh, our last uh, extensions, the Department of Corrections has $60,655 from, from a prior appropriation that was about to lapse. I would accept the motion that that be applied to $200,000 that as we just approved for the doors, doors at the moment prison, that would reduce that um, appropriation to 139,345. Um, so moved. Second. Second, Representative Mills, followed by second by Representative County, during discussion on reducing that appropriation by a lapse amount of. 60,655. Say none, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative, I'm all these things. I'm missing raised hands so much, I can't <laughs> tell you. Representative McConkey. Aye. Representative Mills, the clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Yes. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasek, Representative Boards, Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Klansky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Vanda Castillo. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Evil. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, the motion passes by 18 to 0. That. Now, I know that we have asked the Commissioner of Corrections to come back this afternoon to talk specifically about uh, sewer line and grinder and any other questions we may have. But for now, I will accept that um, with those additions uh, to projects, we are okay with the Department of Corrections to be revisited after. Uh, we hear from the commission. Is there any objections from any members of the committee on that? Moving we right along, Department of Education. They had two items a uh, generator installation at the Walker Building, which was totally federally funded, 
and pre engineering technologies for 300,000. We have okayed that at our last work session. Anybody have any um, second thoughts on what we had agreed to at that point? <coughs> Seeing none, I believe that um, Representative Eagle has a motion. Yes, she does. Mr. Chair, I would like to move that. Um, we add to the education budget um, the refurbishment of the women's bathroom in the um, in their building. I'm sorry, I don't recall the name of it. Uh, to in the amount of six hundred thousand dollars. Second. Second. Okay. Been moved and seconded that we add uh, refurbishment or. Renovation of the uh, ladies' uh, restroom at the Department of Education um, for a total of $600,000. I know that this is not the first biennium that the commissioner has asked for that. We will see what the committee wants to do. Overall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative McConkey. Aye. Court votes, yes. Representative Severo. Yes. Representative Pedolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. No. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Representative Graham. Yes. Chair, the motion passes 17 to 1. Again, subject to revisiting when we have the final vote on the work on the final amendment. Um, the Department of Education had $132,491 uh, that from prior appropriations that was about to lapse. I would accept the motion that that amount be applied to this project of uh, renovation of the ladies' room of DOE. And if that were to be approved, the new additional funding would be $467,509. Uh -oh. I'll second it. Representative Ebel. Representative Ebel seconded. Any discussion on this? Mr. Shea. Just so I'm clear, Representative Graham, you, you want to split this new appropriation between um, a new appropriation in House Bill 25 and repurposing an amount of existing appropriation. Um, and, and then repurpose the 132 and change that they had from prior capital budget. Can we do that? If you can do it, um, it may cause some confusion when people are trying to kind of keep track of the project because you'll have an appropriation in two different places. Um, and, and I guess I would ask, uh, why only a piece of what's remaining of the repurposing amount and not the entire 233,000 that you have remaining? Which, where are you looking? Well, I, just to make sure, I, I guess I'm trying to make sure I have everything. So the, the Department of Correction projects, both of those were those repurposed funds, the 200 and the 300? Corrections, there is only 60,655. To go oh. one project on boys. Oh, um, okay. 
just just for clarity, when you when you don't need to um, align what an agency's lapsing to a new project, you can use the whatever is you want to repurpose for a new project in its entirety. Right. You don't need to just limit it to whatever the the agency may be lapsing from an existing project. Um, so I, I would thought the Department of Corrections you had voted to um, fund both the new projects from the repurposing dollars. I guess I might have missed that. Uh, I think we did it only for one because it was such a small amount. We did the actual vote, Mr. Shea, was for to repurpose the uh, Department of Corrections had a lapse for $16,655. That lapse Three hundred thousand is going to be all new money. Okay, I, I didn't catch all that. You were breaking up, Representative Mills. But that's that's okay. At the end of this, uh, maybe through a phone call or an email, we can clarify a few things. If yeah, I have, we will be on the phone. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. Well, that's fine. Oh, okay. Relax. Yeah. Do you have 132491 from to be applied to leaving? Leaving 467509 to uh, new money. Representative McConkey. Aye. Clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Yes. Uh, yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blazing. Representative Lawrence. Yes. Okay. Representative Kaczynski. No. Representative Kalansky. No. Nope, I had my second. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cunia. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, the motion passes 18 to 1. Thank you. Um, next up, Department of Environmental Services. At our last work session, we agreed on everything that the governor had proposed, with the exception of we wanted some more information, or at least a discussion with uh, Commissioner OIT. Uh, about the one stop IT system upgrades. Anybody wish to change their mind on that? Uh, I know that uh, Representative Edgar probably had the motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, I would like uh, to make a motion to fund the coastal flooding model uh, at this time. Uh, I will uh, make a motion for $162, $1,000, and um, with the uh, ability possibly to increase that later when we get to the very end. But the motion is for $162,000 to, uh, to fund a uh, coastal flooding model. Is there a second for that or not? I'll second it. Okay, we can move and second it. For one hundred sixty-two thousand, Representative Edgar, the the department had requested 
that they have $161,890 um, that was about to lapse that they said that they could use for this project and that they could make do with that amount. Um, unless, uh, I, are you willing to go to that amount or do you want to stick with the 162 million? Um, I, I just rounded there 100, I thought 161 up to 100, because it was 161, eight some. I just said 162, so. When you start rounding, then you start adding to the bottom line of uh, uh, we can go with exactly what they say that they are, uh, uh, lapsing, which. Okay, which is $161,890. Yes, I'll make that, yes, let's use that figure then, sir, if that's what you'd like to do. So the motion would be to repurpose um, last money from the Department of Environmental Services of $161,890 to the coastal flooding model. Is that the way you would like to have it done? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thanks. Okay. Been moved and seconded. Representative McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it was nice to hear from uh, our past Senator Rasiles this morning. Uh, I want to be supportive of uh, Representative uh, Edger at this point. Uh, I'm going to vote in favor. I believe uh, I'm not totally uh, sold on this project. I'm most likely, when we're done, look at a lesser number so that we can get this project started. But at this point, I will vote yes. Any other comments on this or questions, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Representative Thompson. Um, having been a coastal contractor for the last 20 years and uh, constructing seawalls and seeing uh, the mean tides rise almost 19 inches in the last since 2000, um, I think that whatever money we spend on this study uh, is money well spent. I know there was a governor's commission report done a number of years ago by the New England governors. I've read that report and it recommended that all states raise their seawalls a minimum to feed immediately to deal with uh, global warming and the effects we're going to have from that. And I, I've seen the flooding in the Hampton in rye areas on a almost weekly basis some summer. And I think there certainly needs to be some money put into this to figure out how to offset and mitigate these issues. Thank you. Um, and right now we're looking at <coughs> using the, the lapse money to continue on with this, and which does not add to our bottom line of generally funded projects um, when we get to um, the bottom line and see where we are um, any of these line items can be revisited but for now call the roll please thank you for, for thank repurpose you. Uh, 161,890 from DES to the coastal flooding thank you mr chair mr Mc representative mcconkey aye Court votes yes. Representative Severo. Aye. Representative Adolfi. Yes. Representative Newt. Yes. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Yes. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. 
Mr. Chair, the motion passes 19-0. Thank you. Um, the next agency is the Fish and Game Commission. <clears throat> At our last work session, we agreed to the sum of $4,615,000 uh, for the powder mill fish factory. Did anybody change their mind or want to discuss this again? What the governor has proposed is a total of $25,971,009 in generally funded projects for the Department of Health and Human Services. Anybody have questions or comments about any individual uh, project on this? Understanding that a large portion of it is funded uh, is matching funds and that we will be hearing from DOIT um, later this afternoon since a lot of their uh, requests are um, in the IT world. We can hold off on the final vote on, um, so I vote even on, on health and human services um, until we hear about that. But there are a couple of Things that uh, we may uh, want to do in addition to what's in here. Representative McCarthy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I believe the, uh, the Wilkins building is part of this. Uh, there was a cost of a, a proposal to demolish. Uh, a failing building. I would like to propose that we add, and I believe the number is seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to the bottom line for the demolition of that building. I will second that, Mr. Chair. Okay. If I remember correctly, that building has fire. It is currently unusable. Has chain link. It has got eight security fence around it, but it is a. Uh, Hasn't, shall we say, to to, to use, um, and at some point um, we are going to need to do something about that state building in the middle of um, the the Queen City. Is um, as I said, a nuisance. I'm not. We can ask when they they come this afternoon what what their plans are, but. At this point, uh, any questions on appropriating seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to remove um, the demolition of the roof in this building? I'm going to clarify. Is this in Manchester or Concord? No, it's at the Center. So, okay, in, it's in Manchester. Okay, I just want to be sure. And was it something that that the, the department didn't didn't get in the governor's budget? That is correct. All right, I just can't seem to find it. It, it is uh, under HHS. I think it's towards the. It's one of their priorities. Priorities. Right. Not. It's in the. It's in the. Their presentation. Oh, in their brief, not in in the. What's that, evil? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I do plan to support this, Mr. Chairman, but I'm very interested to hear what HHS has to say about the Sununu Center and what their overall plan is, because some of the um, buildings that are deteriorating are external to the main center, and it just will be good to find out what they have in mind for those things. 
as we sort of put our precious dollars out there. Thank you. I, I think that no matter what Representative Evil, even if we were by some stretch of the imagination to close that center, we, we still have the responsibility to to take care of the uh, burned out fault. I think you're right, Mr. Chair. Uh, the fire marshal will we put them up. They don't take them away. Um, so the motion is to add the demolition of the Wilkins building under HHS for a total of $750,000. Any discussion, further discussion? Seeing none, for Re Representative McConkie. Aye. The court votes yes. Representative Samaro. Yes. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Yes. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalatsky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van de Castillo. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, the vote is 19 0 in favor of the motion. Um, Is that, is that in here? Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I believe there's an additional need to replace a boiler um, and a longstanding uh, policy of uh, taking care of uh, heating and roofs. I would like to move that. I do not see my number in front of me, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps you can help me with that. Um, what I have from their presentation is $100,000. And I would uh, ask you to amend that that we scoop up some money that is left from Health and Human Services, Information Technology, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, and the Veterans Home for uh, just a little over $100,000 to pay for that so that we do not uh, have any new funding going towards this. I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move. <laughs> and funding source. Any comments or questions about doing this? Again, um, HHS will be here this afternoon. We can ask them about that. Um, but moving on um, for the moment, uh, let's do that in the appropriation of new generally funded uh, monies would be zero if this were the tax. Do you need a second, Mr. Chair? I think I heard one. Okay. Oh, bills. <laughs> this is straw. Okay. okay. Details. As for clarification, what blue are we talking about? It is in the, the, the barn um, at uh, Senator Use. Senate, okay, a barn is in an open. Yeah, I think it was their number one uh, unfunded priority in their presentation. Okay, in their presentation. <laughs> Either Thank number you. one or number two, but it fits in with our available funds. Great. And it is a zero sum game in lots of ways. We're up ahead. Okay. Huh. Representative Jack. Uh, thank you. The one concern that I have is this is an agency estimate, not a durable first estimate. And we feel more comfortable with the number if you were able to get a first estimate. Uh, uh, and I think that 
we can try, but if you will look at uh, what uh, Representative McConkey is, is suggesting we use to pay for this, the lapses total of 100,000, so it's a little over the 100,000, just in case that that estimate is not correct. Uh, I would, if it costs more than that, we've got, um, they'll have to come back to us. Or do the same, one of the two. Okay, Representative McConkey. Aye. Clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Aye. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Lysick. Representative Boards. Aye. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Polanski. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Vanda Castillo. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Chair, the motion passes 19-0. Provisionally, we finish with admin services until we hear from OIT about all of their uh, projects that, that deal with information technology. I would remind the committee on health and human services that what we heard about some of these IT projects, they need to get done because we are already being fined by the federal government for not having these systems up again. And if we can avoid uh, long-term uh, repayment of stuff to the feds, um, it's probably a good thing. That comes out of operating funds uh, monthly or quarterly. I forget what the exact uh, billing cycle was. Information technology, um, the department did not ask for anything more. So, unless there is an objection, we should accept what they asked for, subject to hearing from the commissioner uh, this afternoon. That was for six million uh, four hundred seven thousand one hundred eighty seven dollars. I'll make a motion that we accept that um, amount. We, we, we just okay. Changes, we just consensus there. They're right. Not, However, you want to do it. Unless somebody raises a true objection to doing that. Uh, at our last work session, we um, tentatively approved for $1.4 million for uh, the Hampshire report for a continuation of that project. Anybody change their mind? Um, Liquor Commission, at our last um, work session, we tentatively <coughs> approved. Uh, $1 million for uh, credit card point of service. That is bonds, other not bonds. General comes out of their fund. Um, and they said that they could uh, pay for that. Military and Veteran Services Department. There is Um, recommended changes from the action in general. Uh, in his testimony, uh, 
there's priority for the anti-terrorism uh, force protection, which had 415,000 uh, generally funded bonds matching 1.245 million in federal funds. He stated that that was all going to be federally funded now, clean up $415,000. He um, would ask that we report, we take that money and put it against uh, readiness center renovations, uh, which would be funded at $600,000. Federal and six hundred thousand dollar bond, um, and if we take um, there is money left over from the one point seven million from department <coughs> that we use on one point five for the um, turning basins. We could match the uh, the fourth. We would still have the 415,000 that was there, but match the, the remaining 185 from lapses. Um, so I would accept the motion that we do that. So moved. Second. Is everybody clear on what we're doing? Representative Dubin. Um, no, I think that's what, that's what I wanted you to do. I was hoping we were doing that. It sounds good. It will not change the bottom line, and uh, right now in the department for what we are using for general funded portion of uh, his request, because everything else was we changed the four hundred fifteen thousand to uh, uh, readiness information yeah. statewide, uh, as outlined in his proposal from. Uh, his testimony, and we would match it with some repurposed money so that he gets the 600,000 he needs to match uh, 600,000 of federal funds. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, clerk. Representative McConkey. Aye. Clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Aye. Representative Fidolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Fleisick. Representative Boards. Aye. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Banda Castillo. Representative Cludia. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Brassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Chair, the vote is 19 0 in favor of the motion. Is there all of the rest from that department is federally funded? Are there any questions that anybody has that needs to be addressed on those projects? Be done. I will accept the, that we without that change, we are in agreement on military affairs and veterans service. Um, natural and cultural resources. For a total uh, fairly funded portion of four million eighty-three thousand dollars. <coughs> With uh, federal funding of 1.15 million for part of building up to this. Any questions or comments on what is currently there? Uh, 
Dr. Savage Thompson, you had a comment you I, made earlier, I think. I do about um, revisiting their uh, budget request for Cannon Mount. Um, I've spoken with uh, Tom Mansfield over there over the last few days, recently as this morning. And um, the, the life of the Cannon Mountain Tramway is, uh, I think was originally calculated 30 years. It's at the 42 year mark now. If we were to find a way to come up with $6.25 million to do this project, um, it would take three years from the time we give them the money and they need the money in order to place an order with the company that designs and builds these facilities. Um, it would take two years to design, build it, and get it shipped here from, I don't remember if it's Denmark or France, but, um, and then another year to, to erect it. Um, we take in about $1.5 million a year in revenue from that operation. Uh, probably a new, more efficient system would bring in more. And it seems like the payback on that is maybe a maximum of four years. And uh, it's really something we need to look at. If we don't get it into this budget, um, it's going to wait another two years and it'll put it five or six years down the road. Um, I see your hand, uh, Representative Abbott, but this is probably a good time for me to bring this up. In the current um, American Rescue Plan, I think it's the title of the last federal um, budget, um, uh, COVID plan that was passed and, and President Biden signed into law last week. There is $122 million coming to New Hampshire for state capital projects. Um, so some of the needs that we are talking about will be addressed with that one. Um, I don't know what the strings are on that. It is not here yet. The guidance has not been provided to the state head on how to use that money, but it will come in a and I have been told um, by the uh, governor's budget director that that it will be not lapsing money, meaning that we'll not have to be spent this calendar or this fiscal year. Um, while I am supportive of the need to, to fix the tramway and replace it, I'm not sure. I don't see how we can find six million plus. Um, I don't know what they would need to to do even preliminary design on it. They, um, need, they need the total funding available to commit to that company to get them to do the design work. Okay. And, so that's uh, that's the, the kick off. And I'm just talking as, as a member of the committee, not as chairman, that I understand where it fits into our winter sports um, and the fact that, that it is useful and it does bring in for uh, parks and rec and, and natural resources, but to add six million to the line would take us up to about a hundred million dollars. Well, where wait. the treasure is recommended, we're already over what the treasure no, is recommended. I understand. I'm just pleading the case. I, 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 um, and and I think you're it's receptive around this around this table and around looking at this heads shaking yes on the zoo. Uh, is is the money that's coming from the federal government, is that going to come through this committee or is that going to be? That, that is something that is unknown. I have asked the governor's office that we be uh, at least uh, at the table when it is decided how to be spent. It may come in the fiscal committee to be used as, as a lot of federal grants are. Yeah. Uh, but that is something that is unknown. I personally believe that representatives of, of this committee, Senate Capital, 
uh, budget committee uh, should be part of the negotiations on how to do that. There is obviously a provision in House Bill 2 to, for the, the forensic psychiatric hospital for some $17 million that would either be paid with federal funds or funded. And that's outside of where we are right now, but it's funded as an addition to this. Um, but I think that uh, the governor, the Senate, or even House Finance, if they could get a hold of the money, would use, would use part of that 122 for that purpose. But that would still leave almost an entire capital budget right. for, for use. And I think that having listened to all of the uh, presentations from all of the agencies over the last month or so, that we are in good stead as to make recommendations on how that money should be spent. And we can work as a committee to prioritize unfunded uh, needs. And that, to me, that would be one of them uh, because it does, it is a jewel in uh, our outdoor activities in the world. It's just, it's the biggest attraction in Northern New Hampshire. And yeah. it's, aside from the from the uh, fact that we're a tourist state, yeah. self-proclaimed. <laughs> it's right to the point of where it's um, it, it also provides rescue capabilities that we don't have otherwise in, in weather conditions and access to the communication system that's on top of it. Yeah. The and looking as well. at their year-round right. use of that tramway is yeah. was eye-opening to me, at least. The, the numbers for it, uh, summer and fall especially. And I pointed out to, to Tom the other day that, you know, it's not just the 6.2 million. We're going to lose the tramway for a year. Yeah. So we're going to lose a million and a half while it's down. So it's actually a seven point five million dollar commitment, um, and uh, uh, hoping we can find a way to do it. Please, sir. I got it. Unmute. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tim, and um, I. I just feel that the. In the presentation, uh, um, I just wasn't really comfortable with the way it was uh, presented. And when I'm asking about the controls for the tram and whether the Department of Information Technology had been consulted, and the response was no. And I just think in terms of the planning, I'm not opposed to um, the, the uh, tram. But I think that the, uh, the plan needs to be crystallized a little bit more and to how it would be approached. And that, that's just the way I feel about it. Mr. Shea, are you still alive? I am. I've been listening. I have a question. Okay. What to having this additional federal money or capital projects, if we were to indicate our desire to go forward with something like the tramway, and we put a dollar in the House Bill 25 to say, and then with words in our board, our the committee report that says we support this and if federal funding becomes available, we think we ought to go forward. Um. You could you could put a note in. So essentially, that's what they did in House Bill Two with the um, youth, uh, the forensic unit. Right. That was structured in a way to say if there's federal dollars that can be used to do that, then that will be the first dollars that shall be be used. And then they added the capital appropriation. Um, you could make a statement in in. I mean, I don't know if I would put a dollar in a line. Okay. But you could. I think you could probably include a section that says. Um, you know, if federal dollars were to become available, you know, the, the committee's priority of projects would be A, B, and C, but I'd, I'd run that by the drafting attorneys. Um, I think that we would like to put something in looking around the committee, at least on the tramway for them to, to look at it. Um, we can revisit this and, and 
when we get some some words and figure out what we can do. Uh, does not mean that it will survive, but uh, I think that that might be one way of going forward with this. Could we appropriate some amount of money um, to allow them to study it and come back with a proposal like Representative Abbott is? Well, and that's asking. what I, I, I guess I, when I asked you that question earlier about if they had given you a number for it. When I said design, it didn't necessarily mean the, the, the blueprint design piece, but the, um, what is it we need and how much we think it's going to cost? But they may we've already, done that before with projects. They may already have all that on. Uh, if you could check and we could talk about it at our next uh, work session, I think that there is enough interest on the committee to include something. Even if it is only the, our statement that we would um, like to see something done with some of the federal money, if at all possible. You can do that. But the rest of cultural resources, natural cultural resources, anybody have any problems with what the governor has proposed? Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, I am um, supportive of uh, Representative Thompson's uh, uh, thoughts on Cannon Mountain, but uh, uh, with uh, Representative Abbott and the Chairman, I just don't know where we find that funding unless the feds come in. But this, this committee has had a long stand policy of funding critical needs for the state parks. Um, and I know that uh, they approved their funding, but I would like to raise uh, raise the thought of adding $150,000 uh, into this budget uh, for the purposes of uh, critical maintenance to be defined uh, by the department and approved by some committee or long-standing committee uh, for that purpose. It's, it's not an off, if I could, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's not an awful lot of money, but uh, I can speak to uh, White Lake State Park uh, in the area of my, of my district that even uh, a load of gravel uh, not found in the budget uh, for a, a year uh, had people hopping up and down just driving to the beach. So, like I said, we've had a long-standing policy from all the chairmen, uh, for all the committees in the 18 years and um, that, that I have had the pleasure of serving here. And I would just propose that we would add uh, at this point in time, $150,000 uh, to this budget for uh, critical maintenance. I will second that. Uh, okay, let me ask the question. Is that in addition to the $1.2 million that we did it for roofing and repairs of which there is a list of Things that they would do uh, at 85 different buildings. I, I thank, thank you for the question, Mr. Chairman. I don't know the answer at this point. Uh, I'd like to plug that in. Or, because <laughs> uh, I'm looking at what they, uh, the, the 1.2 billion covers the, the, the roofing repair and the bird maintenance projects that are required to keep state parks and other. Uh, operating Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would add 150000 to that number. So that would take uh, roofing and repair to $1.35 Thank you. That's all generally funded. Do you second that, so what the yep. Yes, I will second. Any questions about the proposal? Uh, Jack. Uh, thank you. I'll remind everyone that we got $500,000 earlier this morning. Well, I, I think that many people remember that. <laughs> uh, if not, no questions on that. Uh, 
If they come back in two years with 150,000 still left, what does that look like? We'll take that. And Mr. Chairman, I, I you mentioned the it, I think it should appropriate be the capital budget overview committee that has that a lot of us are on. Yeah. Uh, uh, we we can I have my ad, my ad there. Obviously. Uh, I, I think that we're gonna to need to uh, tighten up all of this there with uh, a footnote in the capital budget that talks about every agency coming back reporting how they're spending the money approved. Thank you, John. Um, okay, so we do that. But the motion before us is to add $150,000 to natural and cultural resources roofing and repair line to raise it to $1.35 million. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Court Mr. Clark. Representative McConkey. Aye. Court votes yes. Representative Samaro. Aye. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Bleisick. Representative Boards. Aye. Representative Kaczynski. No. <laughs> Representative Kolanski. Representative Thompson. Aye. Representative Bandy Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Brassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Mr. Chair. Present. Yes. <laughs> Motion passes 18 to 1. <clears throat> At our last meeting, um, we have not discussed any of these. Any other questions about uh, natural and cultural resources, what the governor has proposed? Okay, none. We'll tentatively accept those. At our last session, work session, we accepted what Police Standards and Training Council had uh, been uh, provided by the governor, which is 1.325 million. Is everybody still okay with that? We have a discussion, we move on. Uh, we also discussed the Veterans Home for 1.46 million. And we had no changes to that. Everybody's still okay with that. Community college system. Um, the governor proposed $2.55 million for NCC engineering technology and renovation. Um, so, uh, the system came in with list and then revised list of both critical maintenance and IT, as well as some other projects that they would like to do. Uh, for example, moving Berlin to Littleton for uh, diesel and other mechanics. Um, but again, it's what we can afford. Um, Representative McConnell. Um, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Um, I believe I have my number correct here that uh, I'd like to propose that we add uh, $1 million uh, to community college uh, for the purpose of critical maintenance. Uh, I second that, Mr. Chair. It's been moved and seconded that we um, add to uh, the capital budget, $1 million for the community college system for the purposes of critical maintenance. And when I looked at um, their revised presentation, which everybody should have, they're, they're, they divided critical maintenance into two portions. 
The first portion was just right at one million dollars. Um, so I would be supportive of doing that. And again, um, I'll talk a little bit later after we do this. Any <clears throat> any questions or comments? About adding one million dollars for um, critical maintenance for the community college system. Representative Blue Number, yes, is this for would be spent at all the campuses, right? Oh, yeah. There's a there's no designated <coughs> campus. No designated campus. Um, but every one of those campuses has critical and or uh, life safety issues that need to be addressed. All right, okay. All right, thank you. Which one million will Put it in, but not solve totally. Right. Any other comments? Mr. Representative McConkey. Aye. Good folks, yes. Representative Samaro. Aye. Representative Fidolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Fleisick. Representative Boards. Aye. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Polanski. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. The chairman. Yes. Motion passes 19 0. Thank you. And that brings the total for community college system with that vote to $3.55 million. I will say this we all received letters and other um, um, emails and et cetera from. Members of the Automobile Dealers Association, as well as some of us received phone calls about moving the Berlin <coughs> diesel and other mechanics from Berlin to Littleton. But the cost of that is $5 million to do that. Um, and that's the college's estimate. Um, as I have told a couple people who have called me, I don't see how. Living within our means, we can do that at this point. I would suggest that perhaps when we start talking about adding a footnote into the capital budget about federal funds, we include at least that portion of the community colleges, if not more. And we can talk about that one at our next work session because I think that we need to make clear to the people who receive this money that we have some thoughts on how it gets spent. Um, and I don't think that anybody on this committee disagrees with that statement uh, because we are the ones who have worked a uh, decade in, a decade out, uh, for at least John Cloutier, on all these issues, but we've also heard from all of the agencies. Uh, so we may come up with a, a modified list of what we think is truly critical and, and some of the stuff in the college system is truly critical moving forward, um, regardless of whether or not we, even what the governor is proposing about the two um, higher education systems, um, the buildings and programs still have to be funded. So um, I'll just leave it at that. We can work on what we, what language or what we think needs to at least be pointed out that we would like to see the federal money. Because that federal money may come in and be given to the Senate. Right. So, um, yeah. and we, then, we need to. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I think again, I am, you know, I really don't think the Senate should get all the boring. <laughs> you know, we should have a say 
and unfortunately the Senate comes after us, so sometimes they can, you know, uh, get do things that we we can't or we were more cautious about fiscally. So, and I, and I just want to elaborate. I received calls from people in my area, and I asked them, "Why are you interested in moving us from Berlin to to Littleton?" They said it'd be easier for people to take courses from even Claremont because all they have to do is hop on night, even though it's in Vermont 91 and it's faster than going to Berlin. It saves about an hour. So they're lobbying me on this. I can't promise. I, at the time, I didn't even know the amount. You know, but I said I made no promises. But if we could put in language some of that federal money, that would be, I, I mean, that would be great as far as I'm concerned. Okay. We will have to, with uh, Representative I'm against moving the college this program from Berlin to Littleton. Uh, neither Berlin nor Littleton is in my district, but um, there are a lot of people that come from the Colbrook area and Errol and that, that go to that college, um, specifically some of them to take the diesel program. And for them to have to go to Littleton, um, when we asked questions of the, of the DOE when they were here to testify, I asked what percentage they thought they'd increase their their uh, school population by and said they thought around 20 percent which tells me if you think it's around 20 percent you haven't done enough research to find out what it is and to spend five million dollars on a guess that that's going to be a better program than one we already have in place particularly in this Miami I think is a bad idea Uh, any other questions or comments about the community college? I know that they have several requests in to all of us, um, and they have done a lot of work on trying to narrow down what they need. But again, um, while it's not quite a zero sum game, it's pretty close at this point. Um, so uh, hopefully by, by giving them some additional monies for the critical maintenance, we can help them help the law, at least until the Senate and others get a hold of the budget. Uh, moving on to the Department of Safety. Uh, last, at our last work session, we agreed to $750,000, which was the total request for them. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a specifically appropriate place to discuss the uh, new purpose. It would be in a separate section of the point five. Uh, so I will move to add a section to House Bill Twenty Five to amend. Uh, will tell me if I got the reference to correct. Twenty nineteen, one forty six colon one, Roman fifteen B to read. B, Fire Academy, new truck, and HVAC upgrade for $1.2 million. And what that does is uh, allow them to uh, use the $74,000 that they have left over from the fire truck on the HVAC upgrade. And it's a recommended way that the LBA can do it. Uh, I have uh, is there a second to that? Uh, folks, I have a few seconds. Um, I would remind everybody that that was presented as part of his lapse. Um, they read through the lapses and we approved that. So, is there any discussion? Uh, Representative Abbott, that we had up. Um, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. But I couldn't understand a word of what Representative Jack was saying. Neither could I. I don't know if everybody else had that problem too. I, I, I couldn't hear him. Reading from the report that I sent out, which you all got. That's on the second page. Uh, this, so I'm moving that we add a section to House Bill 25, 
that amends 2019-146-1, Roman 15-B, we read B, Fire Academy, new truck, and HVAC upgrade for $1.2 million. And the effect of this is to, the effect of this is, to, Mr. is to allow them to use the $74,000 that is left over from buying the fire truck on the HVAC upgrade where the bid came in over what the appropriation was and they haven't been able to finish it. Any questions on this motion? Seeing that, I will. Thank you, Mr. Shea. That's the Representative McConkey. Aye. Chair votes yes. Representative Savello. I guess I just have a question. Sir. We're doing the one with the fire now or fire. Yes. I say yes on that one. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Yes. Representative Kazit. Yes. Representative Kolanski. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van Castillo. Representative Fudia. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chair Graham. Yes. Chair, the vote is 19 nothing in favor of the motion. <coughs> All right. Um, and our last work session, we did uh, uh, agree to uh, the Department of Transportation generally funded uh, projects for 1.72. One million seven hundred forty-two thousand and twenty-two dollars. Anybody change their mind about that? Looking at Department yeah. of Transportation. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, there were two projects that I think are important to be brought in as a partial funding. Uh, which I believe is on the uh, transportation side of the railroads. And I know I'm going to make uh, they, uh, both Seacoast and is it North Country? Well, oh. yes. Those, those are separate, they're not under DRT. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where we put them the last time. Okay. Uh, if we could uh, finish with okay. DOT and then we will talk about. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I withdraw my motion at this time. Okay. Now, under the uh, highway funds uh, portion of the Department uh, of Transportation, um, this is an amendment to House Bill 25 that has been Drawn up on the March 5 You should all have a copy of that, uh, which moves around um, the, the highway funded portion of it. Um, it changes the bottom line 
from 14845 to 15995. Um, and it's all highway funds that generally funded. Um, this is something that we had agreed to uh, when we were discussing what uh, the department had come in and asked to do with highway funding and storage sheds and fuel management system and the rest. So I would ask somebody, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, you have in front of you uh, Amendment 2021-0793H to House Bill 25. And I would ask that that be, since it's under my name, I will move to the it. If you do, Mr. Shea, can we bring that up so the people can actually see it if they don't have it? I'll second your motion so it's on. Uh, it is not approved until we approve it. That will have to be incorporated into the overall because there's only one amendment that can go forward, but that's what it is and it is what we discussed. Um, Any any discussion on that? If the department is online, I think they are. If they have, uh, they were. Uh, if they have any comments or questions, I would take them at this time about this. I think it is what uh, the department did ask for. They asked for five million. Uh, yeah, bring him, did you bring him up? Chris, go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, the department has read the amendment and we are in support in total agreement with, with the amendment. So we very much appreciate Representative Graham putting this forth. Uh, sure, yeah. It's what we try to do. We try to work with you with all of the agencies. Um, but um, it, it changes that section for the uh, highway bonding. But um, I think it is clear on what we want to do with the money and not, not the rest. So, anybody have any further questions or comments about that? Thank you very much. Yep. Deputy Commissioner, right? Yes, thank you. I, I get titles to do this. All right. Seeing no further hands raised on this amendment, I'm going to call a roll, which will then have to be done. Representative McConkie. Aye. Clerk votes yes. Representative Samero. Yes. Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasick. Representative Boards. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. Yes. Representative Kalansky. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Yes. Representative Faulkner. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Mr. Chair. Yes. 18 to 0. Motion passes. And there was one final section at our last work session. 
We did discuss and reach tentative agreement on the UNH uh, university system, $15 million. Anybody change their mind or want to add anything to that at this point? Seeing none, we've gone through every agency, subject to some, subject to some changes, maybe after we hear from them. Um, uh, those agencies we have to come back in and see my rough figures uh, with some of the changes we've made and not all of them. Uh, we are within a couple of hundred thousand dollars of where the governor proposed in his original budget, despite adding um, these projects. By adding uh, some other things, and we still have um, some things we need to talk about. But overall, we stayed pretty close to the dollar amount that the government proposed, um, which, while not a requirement, um, is still a good thing when we try to go forward with um, selling this to the total membership of the house. Representative Jack. Now, before we pick up the railroads, do we need a motion on the section 14 here? No, we did that last time. The what? The deletion, the deletion of the two ads. Do we need a motion to do that? On which? On the section 14 and the last group of boxes. Was that not part of your report that we approved? That, that was part of your report that we approved, right? Okay. Yeah. That's why I looked at it. All right. All right. Um, we retained two bills um, to see if we could fit them into the capital budget. The time being almost noon. Uh, and we have the, the agencies coming that want. Uh, I'm going to recess the committee until 1 p.m. Um, so that those of us who actually made it in the carpet into the room can go find some place open or some place to eat. Uh, the rest of you can start out to uh, wherever you go when you do it so. Uh, but the committee will be in recess until uh, 1 p.m. when we will hear from the uh, agencies that we asked to come back and talk about a couple of things. And then we will discuss the two uh, retained bills and then one final quick look at everything that we've already done and make sure that we're still all on the same page. It is going very well. I thank the committee for all of their hard work so far, and we're moving along quite well, and I appreciate that. With that, the committee is in recess until uh, 1 p.m. Thank you all. Okay, thank you.
Time being 1 p.m. I'd like to call the Public Works and Highways Committee back into session. Uh, at this point, some members of the committee had asked various members of uh, agencies to come in and discuss some things. First one up, I'd like to bring um, Commissioner Boulay of DOIT. Welcome, Commissioner. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So there have been a couple of the members who have some questions about the overall magnitude of IT within the capital budget. And uh, I believe some of them have questions about maybe scalability or what your thoughts are, and I'll begin with uh, Representative Eagle. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good to see you, Commissioner. Um, and thank you for all you've done the past year, getting us up and running and remote, et cetera, et cetera. I know it's been quite a hurdle. Um, so as the chairman said, um, when we look at the budget, um, $35 million of capital funds are being uh, suggested by the governor to be appropriated for IT costs. And as you yourself has ob have observed, and even the budget director observed, this is um, a much bigger slice of the capital budget than there has been in the past. And so <clears throat> I just wanted to talk to you about um, scalability on some of them. I mean, we realize that the DHHS um, issues, we're going to get fined by the federal government if we don't comply. But um, there was some uh, question raised by a couple of people about the one stop uh, in the DES budget. It was about $5 million. Um, so that was one thing I was going to ask you about. Um, if there was any scalability there you could discuss with us, or maybe since you have an idea of the overall situation, you could make some suggestions. So thank you. All right, well, thank you, Representative Ebel. And um, glad to see you're back on the IT Council. We'll be, uh, we're gonna have a meeting pretty soon on lots of good topics. Um, I'd like to first start, I'm gonna, uh, if the committee will indulge me for a moment, I will review the process we went through to get to the governor's budget. And then I'll talk about some, some factors, I think, that led to where we are today. And then we can go into how, where we take it from here. Um, so uh, the, we did actually work with all the agencies to develop their capital, uh, uh, technology-related capital budgets. And we, uh, we did um, compare those to their strategic plans to make sure that they actually met uh, um, fit in with the plans and, and that we understood where each of those projects stood in the overall agency prioritization. We then um, used a model that we built, we've been using now, it's our third biennium using this model. It's a kind of a complex model and I'd be happy to share it with you folks sometime when you have a bit more time. But um, it really takes into a bunch of factors like a potential impact on citizens, um, federal leverage, for example, is, is a big one. Organizational readiness to do the project is, is a factor. Um, so, you know, the, the federal or the other funds leverage is kind of a big deal. And that's one of the reasons why you see a lot of HHS projects rising to the top of the prioritization matrix. Um, so uh, for the last uh, couple of biennia, the governor has drawn a line and the prioritized list, he might decide to tweak the prioritized list. Uh, in this, this particular biennium, the, I think what we put forward was what was accepted by the governor. And um, so I asked specifically in, in anticipation of this hearing, I asked the governor's office specifically about, you know, it's a big, big jump in, um, in dollars. And, you know, um, you know, what's your number one reason for that? And, and the, the the answer was uh, pretty straightforward. They, you know, particularly in the in light of the last year or so, the, the recognition that more than ever, technology is driving our citizen services efforts. 
is reflective of what of the amounts that the, the governor put forward as a suggestion. So that was the that was one factor. Um, another factor is the overall uh, technology density, which I think is really a corollary, corollary of the first factor. It keeps increasing in, in our agency partners. You know, we keep finding that you know adding technology is the way to deliver uh, citizen services in in the world as we live in it today. Um, there were a, another factor uh, was, um, you know, last biennium was a, a long time low. I, I, I actually looked back all the way as far as I could find records. I think it was 10, 11. And last biennium was an, an all time low for technology projects, which I think probably created some pent up demand in this biennium to, to have more and, and larger projects. And, and, and again, a corollary to that is that it did create some deferred maintenance. Um, particularly in health and human services, where they had some things where we've actually fallen off the compliance curve and, and now are either getting fined this, this biennium or about to get fined. So we're not having remain compliant with our, with our, with uh, the requirements from our federal partners. Um, and, and I would actually say um, environmental services is one of those where we, you know, we have some deferred maintenance. We have those, those systems in one stop or are, are um, you know, they're, from a technology perspective, they're pretty old. Some of you may recall that we, we actually we did a, a cyber a statewide comprehensive cyber assessment uh, last year, um, and we found some issues with some of our systems, including One Stop. And what we found overall in the state, from an application perspective, was the age of the technology. Um, had a direct relationship to the likelihood that there might be um, cyber vulnerabilities. Because the back in the day when we were writing applications 25 years ago, um, people weren't worried about cybersecurity very much back then. And now it's a big deal. So that I, I'd say on the one stop, there's a lot of opportunity to improve our citizen service capabilities, improve the reliability of what we offer. Um, and I think, I think uh, Commissioner Scott is here as well today. So it might, you know, there, at some point, I, you know, I'd like to hear his take on it, but from a business perspective, I know that he's very supportive of it. Now, um, I've been in situations plenty of times where um, a proposed budget isn't what gets passed either in the private sector or in, in the public setting as we're here today. There's really two ways of approaching that. If, if it's the will of the committee to reduce the amount of tech spend in, in the capital budget, then there's kind of a couple of ways. One, like uh, is, is Rep. Ebel uh, mentioned, scalability. And I'm assuming that doesn't is not referring to scaling up. So um, you know we can <laughs> we can make asks. Uh, we can all go and, and say talk to the agencies and say, hey, you know, uh, we we need to sharpen our pencils a bit here. And you know, I've thought about that a bit from my own perspective, from the from what I've asked for. And um, so I think there's almost always potential for scalability. Um, and then is, you know, are all of these, um, you know, would the committee prioritize things in a similar fashion as the governor? Um, we, we um, you know, we agree with the prioritization. We're the ones that came up with it. Um, there, it may be that we have to do a little less um, in, in this biennium and then, and then move some of that forward in a future biennium. I mean, one of the challenges with, um, with health and human services is that in order to get a good, particularly on those 90, 10 um, projects, to get a really good general funds bump, you have to take a really big slice out of the project, which isn't, um, you know, which isn't always gonna be healthy for the project. So, so that's my, uh, those are my formal remarks. I'm happy to take some more questions. Any other questions of the commission? I'll, I'll follow up, <clears throat> follow up, Mr. Chair. Um, so I guess what I, I would just ask, um, for instance, with the with the one stop um, or any of these things, if you took three hundred thousand dollars off or one hundred thousand, I mean, does it really affect the ability of the project to go forward? Um, I, I would think there's opportunity in, um, to, I've done that many times in my career where you say, um, hey, let's, you know, let's not cut projects, but let's scale them back a little bit. And then if you do it to all of them, 
in a similar way, it actually turns into a reasonable amount of money. So, you know, I'd say that's not a bad approach. Thank you. I, my, my agency um, counterparts might not agree with me. <laughs> I mean, just the mere fact that uh, DOIT is presumptuous enough to uh, prioritize all of the agency projects against each other versus treating them as stovepipes is a little bit, you know, is, is, a, is a little problematic. So me saying that um, is based on my experience with doing lots of budgets for, you know, decades and decades. And, and I've found that, you know, if you need to get, if you need to get a, a little bit lower then that, that proportional effect in combination with other things can, can really have an impact, so. Well, in the case of follow up, Mr. Chair, in the case of DES, there's a coastal flooding program that needs a maybe another three hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, I just I was that was one of the reasons I was asking. Yeah, and, and I would since Commissioner Scott's he, I believe right, I is here. I think uh, I would ask him to comment on whether he would cut you know money elsewhere or or um, you know choose to move to change that amount. So. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Representative Thompson. What in the in the projects that you manage, Mr. Director, where um, where are we just out of date? What ones of these projects are the most critical? Um, well, the um, I'd say you know in terms of the total dollars and impacts to citizens, which is how we prioritize, you know, those HHS projects that particularly like uh, the Medicaid, uh, MMIS and, and the, the other HHS projects where we're compromising our ability to leverage federal funds by not staying up to date. So that's one, if you measure it that way, um, then those are pretty high priorities. Um, then if you say, okay, how, where are we in terms of being able to deliver the citizen services that that are expected then i think all of these projects fall into that that category that we do have a lot of very outdated technology it's it's very similar i mean i hear that we you hear the same testimony um from the building you know folks talking about building and plant right there you know whether it's a so it's a um you know septic uh, system at glencliff or whatever you know there's there's a lot of deferred maintenance and, and we run systems in the state a lot longer than um, than I've ever seen systems run before in my career and on average. So 30 years is not unusual. Uh, the, the revenue system that they're replacing now is over 30 years old. The liquors, you know, point of sale and, and, um, and back of the house processing that, that associated processing is pushing 30 years old. So it's, uh, you know, the driver license system where you replaced a couple of years ago in DMV was over 30 years old. So it's, it's pretty, pretty common. Now I'm, I'm a big fan of running systems for a long time to get the most investment out of them. And so, you know, a decade, maybe even 15 or 20 years might not be the wrong thing. 30, mm -hmm. too, usually too much because you're then you're, you know, you're, you're past your uh, diminishing, diminishing points of return and you're investing in something that isn't worth investing in anymore. But it does cost money to replace systems, as you see. So uh, I think that's my best generic answer to that. Representative McConkie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for the commissioner, um, I, I uh, and for the chairman, I, I'm hoping I'll be able to ask uh, Commissioner Scott a question later. They said he's out there. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, so as far as processing payments to the state, I know that there are some standalone systems uh, that we're told about uh, health and human services and some of the others. Do we have a standard platform um, that, that we use for the processing of credit cards? Example, if I could. Example, subsurface has, a, has, a, uh, has a, the ability to pay um, fees online, but uh, Heritage Bureau does not. My understanding is that um, with the part of the upgrade Commissioner Scott's talking about that they will take care of that in the department supposedly going forward. 
but are we using the same company or the same format on all of our all of our, our processing? I understand that could change in the next six months, but are we at least doing that across your platforms? Um, well, it, it starts with who's who's our um, the bank we're working with or the entity we're working with to do the credit card processing, and that's a uh, that's a single statewide contract currently with Chase that uh, the Department of Administrative Services manages and, and our credit card payments flow through that. The largest volume of those, as you might guess, is from liquor. And liquor drives, liquor's volume drives our pricing for back-end credit card processing. And then you look at, well, what is the use case? So if the use case, for example, with, um, with some of the if you have three different applications that are taking credit card processing and the vendor built in credit card processing into that application, then it may look somewhat unique to the citizen, even if it's the same back end process, as you mentioned. But our, our goal is to, to have um, as small number as possible of different use cases that people have to absorb. And in your case, you know, the the fact that you're dealing with a single agency with a, a, a single set of applications, I mean, it's a reasonable expectation that that um, that we should be have a, a single look and feel for the citizen. It's all the same on the back end, generally speaking. Now, there's some variation there over the almost six years I've been doing this. Um, you know, if, if an administrative services changes over to the company that's on the back end, um, then it takes us a year or more to switch all the agencies over. So that there's that possibility on the back end where it's being different for a while, but. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions of commissioner? Seeing none, thank you. And I thank you. I'd like to remain, I'd like to remain here just to support uh, commissioner Scott, if, if I may. And, but before I call on, um, Commissioner Scott, uh, I do have the treasurer on, uh, and I'd like to hear from her about uh, debt affordability before we go too far into this whole thing. Let's stay on, Commissioner Goulet. Madam Treasurer, did you want Ms. Miller up there too? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Ms. Miller is um, is um, on the call as well. If if uh, Ms. Summer could bring her up, and I and I think there was a question. And, and apologies, I, I missed it while I was um, joining the call. Uh, the question that had been raised was about. Um, Debt affordability at a couple of different levels. And I know you did send out um, a letter to all of us. Yes, yes that's correct. Um, so, um, if if I recall correctly, I was asked to um, um, just very, you know, essentially run a few numbers um, if um, if the committee were to approve. Um, several, um, I, I believe it was 125, 100, 130 million. Um, I think the last one was 135 million. So I was, um, I was asked to, to see if I could run some numbers to, to see what that will do to the uh, debt to revenue ratio. And, um, <laughs> and what, I, what I was, I think I mentioned to, um, to the committee in the past, um, you know, I think a change of five million wouldn't impact the ratio. So what I did is I just I ran all of the numbers, and and the only one, um, the the only number that uh, really changed the needle a bit was the 135 million uh, figure in in our um, debt affordability schedule. So, um, so what I was trying to explain um, in the letter that I that I, in the memo that I sent is um, really a change like that. Even even if even if even if um, there were bond and authorizations of 135 million, um, the impact on the debt to revenue ratio is very minimal. So it's just a matter of um, 
really the committee's, the committee's conviction as to um, you know, how high they would like to go um, above the 125 sort of threshold, 120, I'm sorry, 120 million threshold that we included in our calculations and in our assumptions that we provided through the um, data affordability study um, report that we distributed a couple of weeks ago, I believe. Um, so again, so those, those were just, just the comments that I, I wanted to make and, and, I, and I was trying to explain that in the memo, but, um, but again, again, I think it is, it is um, I will say that it is a committee's um, decision to, to decide, um, you know, at what level you want to go, you know, in excess of the 120 million that, you know, we use as a threshold to calculate um, debt affordability and how much capacity the state will have to, to absorb additional debt. Again, it's a policy decision. Um, I always say, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I'm responsible for running the numbers. So happy to provide all the numbers that you want me to run. Um, but again, in this part for this particular question, that's what I could, that's what I can just, um, you know, add that it doesn't, at least to the re uh, debt to revenue ratio, it doesn't have a huge impact. So the state could perfectly absorb that change if the committee uh, decides to, to do that. Thank you. Um, and I noticed that you did include that if we went to that uh, 135, if we increase our expenditure, debt service expenditure by a little over 22 million in the life of the bond. That's correct. So um, obviously the more we bond, that will be, um, you know, the amount that it will, um, it will be for debt service. So that obviously will occur over a period of 20 years, but I just wanted to give you a figure of, you know, an amount that, you know, that really is what it will, it will translate to, um, you know, an additional 50, 50 million will be about 22 million over the life of the bond. Thank you. Representative Evo. Yes, thank you. And thank you for coming. Um, so I, I went back and I looked at the study uh, last night. And I just want to ask you a question. Um, so you do include the full 50 million for the PFAS uh, bonding in your estimates, right? That is correct, yes. Because I saw that, um, I think it was for 2022, at least the version I looked at, or the, the ratio was 6.2, and then it went up to 6.7, and the footnotes mentioned it was because of the 50 million um, bonding. So um, we have spoken to DES, and I know the commissioner is here. I know that they don't anticipate, at least the last I heard, that they're gonna go you know, full bore with the 50 million. Um, but I just want to clarify that that's, that's in there in anticipation that you, you have to put in capacity. Exactly. And, and thank you for the question. And that is, um, because that was already authorized. We have to either, you know, to be conservative, we already put it in that fiscal year, 2022, um, you know, we could spread it out. We could do, you know, however, um, again, you're correct. We haven't heard details about how that, you know, how that project is going. We just wanted to be conservative and include that amount and to see what that will do to our, our, our metrics. And, and so we, we wanted to see that even when we include that 50 million, our metrics remain healthy. Uh, but again, it's something that we just have to keep in mind as more projects are um, approved and, and that was an authorization that happened uh, not during the um, approval of House Bill 25. So that's, you know, we, we repeat the, the message. We want to repeat the message saying, you know, it's good to maintain that capacity in case there's a need for that additional bond and authorization, that project that, you know, it really is needed and, and it can't wait. So that way we're able to have, you know, the state will have that ability to absorb that debt and, and, and again, looking at the numbers and our metrics, um, those um, appear to be um, that we will still be in a very good position if we maintain that, um, you know, that discipline as, as, again, as the state has done it for, for many years. Can I have a follow up, Mr. Chair? Sure. 
Um, I know it's a very fuzzy situation with the forensic hospital, but have you reflected any potential bonding for that in your numbers? Uh, yes, uh, so we learned about that possibility of having that bonding authorization and if no federal funds are received. Um, so, well, so, so yes, so including that, again, unclear how much and it's going to be authorized in House Bill 25 for this time around. But if we added that amount, um, you know, what I can, what I can, what I can comment on is, is for any additional 50 million um, that is authorized, the, the ratio will change um, between 0.2%, between 2 and 3.3%, between 0.2 and 0.3%. So just to give us an idea what, what that does. So if, if that went to pass, so we will have to add that to our um, um, total of um, bond and already being authorized. So, so yes, we have to continue. So as soon as we hear the possibility of authorizing, um, um, you know, additional capital appropriations that need to be bonded, we do include them in the calculation. At least we keep it in mind and we start tracking, you know, how much our numbers could change depending on those authorizations. Thank you. Other questions for the treasurer? See, none. thank you very much for doing the work and coming back to us with to answer questions. We do appreciate it. It is our pleasure. Thank you for having us back. Uh, since the question has been raised a couple times, uh, when we were talking to Commissioner Delay, if uh, Commissioner Scott could come up, be brought up, and with whoever else he needs to have with them uh, to, to talk about the one stop and, and whatever else. Specifically that though. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the committee. Uh, while I was getting uh, elevated, I dropped out. So I, I don't know the, the last 30 seconds if you said something. Uh, so again, I'm Bob Scott with the Department of Environmental Services, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. The questions that have been raised about under your department, the, uh, the one-stop, um, the appropriation for the one-stop um, system, and whether or not that could be scalable or a biennium or two, where do you see it go? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, short, short, short answer is yes. Of, of, uh, this is not an all or nothing. Uh, I, I will say the staff that worked this issue uh, as we developed this budget request actually asked for even more than this to give you an idea. Uh, you know, that, but but short answer is yes. That that's certainly something we'd be willing to do and, and can do. Uh, you know, some of the challenges, as you're, I'm sure you're aware, is as we have developed these these uh, online services for all our constituents, uh, that's actually increased the demand for it. And as we look at uh, going to a more modern and certainly more secure uh, and more accessible uh, uh, online tools uh, and databases internally, uh, we obviously have to maintain our existing services also. So it, it, it's kind of a double whammy. We have to keep what we're doing while we're working on to, to, to develop that. Uh, so it's certainly a challenge and it's certainly of great interest to us uh, to better serve our, our constituents and to be more efficient. But short answer, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, is yes. Do you care to hazard a dollar amount? A dollar amount by which it wouldn't be scalable anymore? No, that you could continue on with, with this project um, comfortably. I know it's going to be whatever you say, but uh, if we were to take out two million, four million, five hundred thousand, which kind of ballpark thing? Which which one of my children do I love best? Is that what you're saying? Um, you know, again, I, we'll work with whatever whatever we can get. But again, uh, the the original uh, ask from staff is actually higher to meet our needs. Uh, 
So, you know, as close as we can keep get to keeping where, where our request is, obviously the happier it would be. We will work with whatever the, the committee uh, chooses to give us. Representative McCarthy, and then Representative Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Scott. Um, I had, uh, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Pelletier about this. He had made a phone call and they referred me off to uh, Mr. Taggart, uh, who I believe is in your, your, your department as opposed to uh, the IT commissioner. And um, he permitted me to see one of the modules that you're looking to move forward. Um, a great presentation modeled heavily off the, the ever successful uh, subsurface uh, model. Uh, and I expressed to Pelletier, Mr. Pelletier, uh, that I, I think, you know, we're, we're somewhat backwards, but it is somewhat opinion that we should do in wetlands before we do shoreland, but I appreciate the, the step moving forward. So my question is, when you're talking about scalability, it looks like Mr. Taggart and others have a great amount of work in that program, your YouTube video. Um, and it would be a great help to a major number of people. Could that program move forward with still working on some of the others at a $4 million bond figure? Uh, again, uh, we'll take whatever the committee would, would, uh, would give us the, it, the real issue is going to be the the the, the one-stop platform. The the underlying databases require uh, mapping and work, uh, so that that's one of the problems with that. Uh, so yes, uh, that's certainly a priority for us. And as you saw, Rep. Sort of given that that pilot, if you will, is, is there, uh, our intention would be to move that move that forward because a lot of the work and the mapping and all that has been done done with that. Uh, so, uh, you know, the question, the next question would, if I were you, I'd be asking is when, and I think we talked about that last time, uh, at the last capital budget is, you know, it, it's a matter of resources and, and, uh, I don't really have a good time frame for that. As I mentioned, the, uh, uh, and this is not a knock at, uh, Commissioner Goulet. I think it's the nature of the work. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never seen an IT project come in on time, at least in the state government. Uh, and, and, and while I, if I could, you, uh, to your question on the wetlands program, one of the concerns with the wetlands program is uh, every time the law and or rules changes, uh, that would drive, it, that, you know, it's, it's really helpful to get all that stabilized while we work on what the platform would look up, right? So you, know, you, have, you have the underlying law that is going to inform what the user and what the staff need to do in that database and in the user platform. And it's very helpful to have that a little bit more stabilized. And that's been a, a work in progress, as you know. We're trying, we've been trying to, uh, with the wetlands rules, to uh, streamline those and, and uh, have a fresh set of eyes on those. So I, I don't know if that helps, Representative. Oh, uh, um, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate your comments. And if you're, if you're out there looking for fresh eyes, just give me a call on, on wetlands. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner, for coming. I mean, as a member of the Oil Fund Disbursement Board, I saw firsthand how important it is that your systems are up and running. And uh, we, you know, it took a while to process quite a few requests because the system was broken down. And I fully support you keeping everything up to snuff. Um, there, but one thing I wanted to ask in particular is there's a lot of interest among some of the members and I know people in the seacoast for the coastal flooding uh, finance and um, at this point it just needs another $340,000 to get it over the hump and I wanted to ask you what your feeling was as far as um, how that could work out between your IT budget and that appropriation. Sure. Uh, again, that just for the rest of the committee, uh, what that work would do for coastal uh, flooding model, we have, uh, you know, the good news is we have newer data, LIDAR data, this uh, laser pulse data, which is much more, uh, has a higher resolution. Uh, and we'd be able to couple that with uh, more up-to-date uh, predictive uh, data. 
Uh, and we think that would be a much better useful tool for whether it's designing uh, in new projects or just uh, helping for resiliency on the, on the, the, the coastal floodplains. So that's, so that is very important to us. Uh, whether, you know, again, ideally, uh, you know, to be blunt, the database work, again, we have more work uh, as far as what's needed to go in. And we were trying to be, believe it or not, austere in what we asked for, <laughs> if you could believe that. Uh, so in an, my ideal world, we'd get both. Uh, but uh, certainly that, that could come out of that. I would, I would uh, remind you, my understanding is, is the, you know, we talked last Friday about repurposing lapse money uh, and to the extent what we asked for would be approved, which I, I thought the committee had, had uh, voted on that. Uh, that really means it's not 350 or 340, it would, it would be 189 would be the, the Delta, if you will, uh, just to, just to, just That's a look, Thank you. Um, you're right, Commissioner, that the committee did uh, approve using your lapse money for that uh, flood project. And I believe that um, the meeting last Friday, um, we were informed that that was usable and you can make do with that this time around. Um, again, it's, you're probably going to say it's a policy decision, but um, um, that's kind of where we were at this morning. Additional to bring it up um, totally. This time that's up to the committee. Further questions of BES. Evil. Commissioner, uh, could you just speak one more time briefly about how rapidly you think the PFAS waste management projects will be coming along? Yeah, I, I may ask uh, Sue Carlson uh, to get elevated to see if she can weigh in also. Again, the so the, the as you have already discussed and the treasurer mentioned, so we had the uh, the bill passed last biennium for $50, uh, $50 million of bonding. Uh, we had, we uh, promulgated administrative rules on uh, what we're calling the PFAS uh, revolving loan fund, uh, and those are in place. And it, so that took a little bit of time to go through that process. And my understanding is we have two uh, applications, which I'm not sure even perfected at this point. So there'll be a staging, if you will, as people decide they want to do that. Again, these are loans, not grants. So they, they're looking at, you know, what opportunities are available. Uh, I, I will say, I think the intent of some of the sponsors certainly was uh, that applicants don't go to the drinking water, groundwater trust fund. They go to this loan fund instead, but there's still some, some play in that because sometimes there's multiple contaminants. And, and so I say that in the context is certainly we don't envision in any capacity and we're not seeing it yet that there's going to be, boom, here's 50 million that we need to fund. Uh, it, it seems to be dribbling in, if you will. And as understandably, as the the people that have the need, the municipalities uh, uh, explore all their options, obviously they prefer to get uh, a grant rather than have to pay a loan. And, and, they, and when they do look at a loan, obviously they need to look at where can I get the best rate, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't, uh, thank you for uh, elevating uh, our chief operating officer, Susan Carlson. I don't know if she had anything else to add to that. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, to your question, Representative Abel, we're currently looking at um, between three and $4 million in loan requests right now. We anticipate for 22, um, approximately $15 million in loans going out and another 15 million going out in 23. And that's what we put in the operating budget, obviously. That is highly dependent on the communities and how much the PFAS remediation will cost and how fast they can have their bond authorizations approved through their towns. Any further questions of BES? 
Seeing none, thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome to stay on uh, as an attendee and figure out what we're doing to you. But, uh, with you. <laughs> with you, I'm sorry. I got you. <laughs> thank but, you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> um, Department of Corrections, I see the Commissioner is on. And whoever else she wants. Where am I? Oh. Good afternoon, members of the committee. My computer froze right mid uh, recognizing us, but I'm here uh, for the record, Helen Hanks, Commissioner of the Department of Corrections. And with me is John Hansen, our Administrator of Logistics and happy to triage any questions the committee may have. Welcome, Commissioner. Um, there were a couple questions, but I'll give you some good news first, at least 10 of the good news. Uh, this morning, as we were going through um, the proposed capital budget, we did tentatively, I say tentatively, because we haven't taken final notes, and added two projects for you um, the, that were on your unfunded list as far as uh, doors at the, at the men's prison. Yeah, for two hundred thousand and close custody unit for three hundred thousand dollars. So um, that's good news. Not the bad news is people wanted to talk to you about um, sewer lines and grinders and those types of things and how how we're handling all of that and whether or not that um, six hundred seventy thousand is sufficient, too much, or just right. Well, uh, Chair, I'd like to first thank you for the tentative good news. We'll take even tentative good news and corrections. That helps uh, keep us motivated to the job at hand. And happy to answer uh, questions regarding the uh, septic and uh, the two different projects proposed in this capital outlay. Okay, thank you, Representative McConkie. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. And I and I and I, I think we may be able. I think the question was coming from me uh, on the grinder and the sewer line, but I think I was reminded afterwards that this item, uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, this line item 38, rebuild sewer line and grinder. This is the ongoing odyssey for the project that's on the, the state prison grounds. Yes, sir. The one that's uh, basically in McGuire Street. Yes. That's correct. And if I could follow up, and the uh, and I and I'm in favor of that, so we don't need to discuss in, in my mind that. Uh, my question was on another one of your want lists, which was talking about an uh, an off property uh, of yours. It was the discussion was whether a grinder pump to connect to the town, uh, to the city sewer system, or to put a septic system, uh, but that so far is not funded anyway. So. Um, and, I, and I'm hoping you'll look at what the alternatives really are and the cost in the long term. But I don't think we need to uh, take committee time to discuss that any further, Mr. Mr. Oh, Chair. Appreciate that. And um, with recognizing that as a off-funded uh, topic, we'll send you some information. If it serves the committee, we'll send it to the whole committee of the analysis done to date. And we'll continue to do further analysis on that project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're very welcome, sir. Any other questions, Representative Evil? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner. Um, I realize that this isn't in the governor's part of the budget, but I am curious because we've invested quite a bit of money in the women's prison. If you could um, talk to us a little bit more about the $350,000 building that you had proposed for trades. One of the reasons that uh, the women's prison had to be built was to try to equalize programming between the men's and the women's prison. And um, I gather that we're not all the way there yet. And so um, there were a couple of things I just wanted to ask you again about that building, but also to refresh our recollection about independent fundraising there had been done related to those programs. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Abel. And your history on the department and litigation is spot on. 
uh, yes, historically we were litigated at the men's uh, facil men's facility specifically, but around education and vocation. And now uh, we're currently working with New Hampshire Legal Assistance under oversight regarding equity and programming for women. So the proposed uh, building, and I'll uh, defer to John to talk about the style of building, was to implement a trade school so we could have equity from the perspective that we have a diverse industries program offered to men, automotive, print shop, uh, furniture masters, and things of that nature. The current uh, facility that was designed does not have capacity through our HVAC system to put those type of services in the existing structure. So we worked on a project with some partners um, to try to find a space on the property um, that would allow for this type of trade school and education and job skills building for women to establish that equity. The fundraising you referenced was done and, and I had a retired member of the department who was the liaison for that. That uh, fundraising was specifically for the equipment that would go into the building. So this uh, request from the department was to build the infrastructure and our collaborator was working on the donations to outfit the interior, if you will, the FF and E that would go into the building in that type of partnership. So I'd, I'd ask John just to describe this building because we were not building it um, in a corrections grade form, not cement <laughs> because people aren't living there, but to create a space that was reasonable within the construction realm to bring the cost down, but also achieve the goal. That's exactly right, Commissioner. So we were looking at a pitched roof type building within the footprint of the existing uh, women's prison campus, it would be behind the secure fencing, if you will. That that building would have a multitude of things in there, including the Wood Masters group, as well as some vocational um, areas to train some of the residents on plumbing, HVAC, and those types of things. So it's a standard building. It would look a little more aesthetically pleasing, sort of like, as you recall, the C2 building with the pitched roof. And it would actually be close to that was the spot that we selected for this. Not a huge building, but it would be an additional building and the cost is estimated about $350,000. Uh, follow up, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the I would just say then, um, from I gather from what you're saying that this is part of the continuing path to com fully complying with the court order on the women's prison. Representative Abel, we're, we're not in a court order. Well, beyond, not however you yeah, want. To. Just I want to be careful because I'm yeah, certainly yeah, another yeah, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, about that. no, it's no problem. <laughs> uh, it is certainly a. Uh, process we're engaged in with New Hampshire Legal Assistance to review the education and vocational program to make sure that we have the an equitable depth of offerings. This was a logical opportunity to diversify the job skill sets that we would teach women who are incarcerated and it would be establishing a level of equity with regard to what we offer to men. So at this time, I think just so the committee knows, we offer a cosmetology program a uh, commissary program that is basically modeled after manufacturing. We have a, um, uh, a braille transcription program that is not uh, turned into the robust program I had hoped it had be, uh, would be in some other programs, but we don't have the depth of what I would call as a, as a woman, the sort of non-traditional jobs um, that should be traditional jobs that are offered to women because of the wages associated with them upon release to help help that reintegration process. And this seemed like a, a good investment to try to move those initiatives forward. Thank you. Thank you. I One question on any of your uh, projects that you have listed as not as proposed, but not included in the government. Who did the estimating on on those, uh, like that bill that we just discussing. So Chairman, I can answer that. So um, we start out with our own internal estimate within the Department of Corrections, and then Public Works uh, loans us project managers and we review them together. Um, in some cases, uh, we're high and they're low and vice versa, but uh, it is a combined effort between the two agencies. Okay, even for the ones that, that like what we're discussing right now, those have been yes, we, we actually did uh, estimating some 
with a finer pencil than others, but on 18 projects. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner. Oh, I was just thanking you, sir. <laughs> Um, any other questions or correction? Seeing none, thank you very much, Commissioner. I appreciate your coming back and um, answering questions from members. We're happy to assist. Thank you for your service to the state, everyone. You're welcome. And wait. Addition is um, we asked for late yesterday. Um, HHS uh, Commissioner Weaver. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, Again, some good news, maybe bad news, depends on how you want to look at it. Um, we are looking at adding um, the demolition of the Wilkins building at uh, Sunita Center. Um, if, if when I finish talking, if you could just give us a, another brief description of what that is and why it needs to be demolished. And also, we're looking at adding. Uh, uh, a boiler at the barn at the community center, um, but then it's all wrapped into what is the future of the community center? Okay, that's all one question, correct? <laughs> it's all one question. I, I will do my best. I believe I have, so I have Mr. Clapp on the line as well, who uh, could speak. I think. Uh, Dave Clapp could speak to the specifics of the buildings. I know that Wilkins building has been closed for quite some time. Um, it was vandalized. I believe there was also a fire there. So I believe that the building is compromised itself and we have safety fence around it, um, but it still is a huge liability for that campus for anyone trespassing on that campus. Um, so we, I think this is not the first capital request that we've had uh, for to demo that building. Dave, is, did I miss anything on the Wilkins? No, you are correct. It was, um, when we haven't found out exactly how the fire started. It was believed that it was a homeless person in there and started the fire uh, and it did severely damage it. It was reviewed by historical resources and they have agreed so long as we retain some pieces of the building to, um, to possibly reuse in the future. Uh, and then one of your own funded requests was for a boiler at the SYSC barn. Yes, um, the barn the boiler has failed. Uh, we've done a temporary workaround right at this point, but it does need to be replaced. The uh, barn is used for storage of um, ground keeping equipment, some vehicles for the that are in use at Sununu and um, some other items, uh, pro, uh, items they use for programs for the kids. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. So um, just a couple questions, Mr. Clapp. So you're saying, I, I, unfortunately I can't find the uh, DHHS proposal right now, but my recollection of the boiler was that it was to support heat, not just for a barn, but for some other ex external buildings, external to the center. I just don't wanna put a boiler in a building that's already collapse my, you know you know what i'm saying yes i do know what you're saying <laughs> i've been told that it it does support uh two other buildings that are on this on the campus right now besides itself i'm trying to get a hold of the maintenance person down there to verify which buildings they are because i had a feeling you would be asking that 
And do you think that the 100,000 is a solid number or do you still have to work with public works on that? We'll have to work with public works on it, but I think it's a pretty good number for what we need. Okay, and then I had one more follow up. Um, you know, we were up at Glencliff and we saw a lot of things that um, needed assistance, but one of your requests had to do with the septic system up there. And one question I had um, had to do with um, the cost of engineering for it, even if we can't finance the entire thing, if we were able to put together some money for engineering, A, would that be helpful? And B, do you have a rough idea of what that would be? Yeah, the estimate that we put together uh, was also tied into the addition uh, that was slated for up there. So we have a pretty good number on uh, idea on the number to do the repairs. Uh, we could do some engineering up front. That would be quite helpful. I don't have the full number on that. I'd have to work with Public Works to try to get a hard number for that. Representative Thompson. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Clapp, whoever wants to take the question. On the Wilkins building, has there been an environmental assessment done on that as far as asbestos lead paint and that? And if not, is that, if so, is that included in the $750,000 uh, estimate for the demolition? That is included in the $750,000 estimate to do the full demolition. We do know that there is lead paint and there, I believe there was an assessment done on the building before and I believe that the asbestos was removed. Thank you. Any other questions for HHS? Now, the, the big question, because we're talking about the barn and the Wilkins and, and other things, what is, how does the department view the long-term future of the Sanuri Youth Center? That may not be for you, Mr. Black, but or Commissioner, but it would be helpful if you could get it. If, are we wasting money putting any money into any of these buildings if we're going to get rid of them? Sure, thank you for the question. I mean, I think it's a reasonable question to ask. Are you going to be investing in a property that we're no longer going to be using? And I can tell you this, that there will, you know, it's the question that seems to be on every committee of what is the future of the city new center. But when it relates to the, the campus and the needs there, we currently have kids there and we will continue to have kids there for the foreseeable future. We are in the process of uh, building up a system of care, which uh, we're about a year and a half into that. We're about to uh, launch some new programming, which that is going to have an impact on the numbers for Sununu, but it's not going to cause the Sununu Center to not have a need. Unfortunately, we we have a population that commits violent crimes that 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 require that level of care. So at this time, there in the foreseeable future, we're going to still be on that campus. Now, when the system of care gets set up, that's going to inform us. Well, what kind of facility do we in terms of size? Do we need a facility that big? I can't answer that. I can't predict the future, but I can tell you that based on some of the designs that there will still be a need for this level of service. But how that all plays out is is sort of going to come together in, in time. Representative uh, McCarthy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could return to the conversation on Glencliff Commissioner with the, the other gentleman there. The um, representative had asked a question about the uh, engineering for uh, what we thought was just a septic system, but it seems like you're saying that that project also involves a building. I guess my question is, uh, is, is this more than just a, a septic field? Is this a, is this a waste processing and that, that building that you're talking about is needed uh, for that process? Uh, no, the what I was uh, stating is we were looking at an addition. It was a project that was submitted and not considered. And but as part of that, we had built in the um, part of the upgrade for the septic system. So the the design it has already been looked at. We don't have a the, dollar value on the design work, uh, but we do know that the 
the value of the septic system uh, is is that 1.2 million, I believe it is, um, for the the system, and it is only for the system. It's not for the building. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any other questions of HHS at this point? Representative Evil. Um, well, I guess I would ask the IT question again. There's, um, I mean, I think we have a sense that we're not going to do too much with the HHS IT request because so much of it is federally funded. But again, um, just, you know, $100,000 can buy a boiler versus 10 or 20 million. So I didn't know if there was any comment anybody could make on scalability for any of the programs or how they would be affected. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. And I don't know if Dennis is still on the line. However, I think I think Commissioner Goulet summed it up pretty well in terms of that there was a dry spell for HHS for quite some time and we're, we're behind and as you know, out of compliance and facing fines. You know, that said, I mean, is there room to look at something to see where we can uh, do that? I think the complexity for a lot of our projects is once you tap into that, you, you have to tap in to get enough of a general fund return, given the high percentage of the 90% uh, federal match. So if that was a request, that's something that we could look into. But I, I think when Dennis looks and talks about uh, the the uh, impact of it in terms of the serving the citizens and uh, he had two metrics that he used. Those are things that we weighed with him in terms of making these projects a priority. And of course, the capital budget is very challenging because everybody's project is a priority, right? And your committee's job is very uh, next to impossible to do. I completely understand that. But if, if, we, if he wanted us to ask us to do that, we could. I just don't know what the outcome would be if we would actually be able to do that. I don't have Dave Weeders on the phone um, to, to answer that, but thank you. Any other questions for um, Commissioner Weaver or HHS? Seeing none, Commissioner, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us this afternoon. Thank you. That concludes the agencies that I believe that we asked to come. If I'm wrong, somebody I'm sure will correct me. I, I'm just looking at that, Marty, there's nobody else in the waiting room. Um, we've gone through everything. Um, before we go back through a couple of the things, there are two things that we need to address. And, uh, we retain two separate house bills in order to see if the monies could be incorporated into the capital budget. House Bill 595, making an appropriation uh, for the digitization of the Supreme Court records. Uh, we heard that, retained it. There is um, it, there is a capital appropriation that would be associated with it. I would remind everybody that neither the judicial branch nor the AS who were involved in this um, wanted to take on the project as as shepherding the project. Uh, in my contact with the archive, the state archives, they wanted a lot more information and data um, before they would agree to take it on as well. And they're not sure about the cost estimate that was provided to them. Um, but we did retain it to say that we would look at it in conjunction with the capital budget. We don't have to do anything. Um, we still have the fall to look at it um, and make a recommendation to the House as a whole. Um, but from past experience, if we don't include it in the capital budget, uh, most members of the committee don't want to entertain capital projects outside the capital budget, except for very rare instances. Um, 
So when is the pleasure of the committee on that particular project? Ms. Representative Bells. I believe I uh, made the uh, original motion to retain it for this okay. purpose. And uh, as such, and having worked through this capital budget and seeing how tight our pennies are, uh, at this point in time, I would be willing to just let it stay retained and we can look at it next biennium, next year. Mm -hmm. at, and, and, and there's still always the Senate side. There's still the Senate side. So I, I would just say at this point in time, we don't look to put any money towards it. Other chairman, well, again, the question I don't have a bill in front of me. There were how much money are we talking about? Um, it was kind of nebulous. Um, I've got it here. Uh, FY22, 250,000. FY23, 500. So it's 750 for this biennium, and then 1.2 plus, um, in the following biennium. So it's a multi biennium. It's a multi biennium. <clears throat> and 750 up front. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I tend to think it maybe just to, to keep it retained for now, unless the Senate puts it in in their version that the guys vote. Um, the committee system. Hopefully, we will go to committees and conference this year yeah. um, when we get to those things. But our goal right now is to come up with a HB 25 that we can get past to the Senate. Yeah, right. We've got to consider that. Yeah, I just let it go because I just I don't think there's enough information, enough support. Any other members of the committee want to weigh in on that? See, no hands. The second bill that um, we retained, um, I was prime sponsor. Um, that does not make it right. Um, it is an act making appropriation to the Carroll and Stratford County Straight Rail um, Improvements Project and making an appropriation for the Coos County Freight Rail Improvement Project. Uh, both of those rail lines that the original bill requested $2 million for each to be matched um, by an equal amount from those two railroads. Um, we retained it to see if there could be any monies um, appropriated for um, a match to those railroads. Um, speaking as the prime sponsor and not as chair, in the past, we have provided some funds, never what they asked for. Um, and they have made their uh, matches on time and they have reported to the Capital Budget Overview Committee when they were supposed to. However, as we've been talking all day, um, this is a tight budget. Um, so what is the committee's um, desire? Representative McConkie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and in an effort to uh, pull one of the chairman's bills forward, I'd like to offer um, and I, I agree with what the uh, chairman had just spoken about, that we have provided some funding for both of these railroads over the past, and they've been very upfront with the money spent and they've done their projects. So I know these numbers are nowhere near what were asked for originally, um, and um, I still haven't narrowed down which of the two railroads it is, but I believe it's Seacoast. It's Carroll and Stratford County Street Rail. Okay, which was the $250,000 proposal. Uh, so uh, the project the uh, chairman had just mentioned, uh, I would look to add $250,000 uh, to the capital budget. And the second would be the COAS, the COAS County increased by 500,000. It's not a, a lot of money, but I, uh, I think it stands uh, with what this uh, committee has done in the past and shows a willingness to uh, keep our rail projects, especially freight, moving forward. I will second that motion. I'm co so moved and seconded that, um, a port that we incorporate some of the language from House 22 um, for 
250 to the, um, the line in the south and 500,000 to the Coas County freight lines for a total of 750,000 between the two of them, which is bond generally, with the caveat that they are matched dollar for dollar by the rails and that they report to capital budget over. Um, Representative Jack. Uh, thank you. I have located where this is in the 2019. House Bill 25, they are line items in Department of Transportation General, which is Roman 16 XVI. So there are two lines, there's a line item for Coas and a line item for Stratford and Carroll. Uh, they have a footnote that says that the sums appropriated shall be a match to private funds and that they have to report to capital budget overview. So uh, I would guess the motion should be that we add those two line items as, uh, yeah. That was the intent of uh, Representative Pike to, to, to do what was in our previous um, appropriations or funding uh, and move forward. It is not, uh, I know the one in Coas County said if they got the full $2 million, they could complete the project. But to come up with another 1.5 billion in this capital budget is near impossible. Um, as we look at the other things that are in the state owns, that need to, to, to continue to be forward, but as I see it, the state is going to have to be in the state of 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 it is a laudable goal. Representative Evil. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to clarify this amount that you're proposing now is the amount that we did a straw poll on from your sheet earlier today. It's the same amount. Um, we we have that straw. That straw. Okay, but it's it's what's on here. All right, thank you. Right, we stopped for lunch at that point. Oh. I ate too much tuna. I just wanted to reiterate for the for the new members of this committee, and I think you just you just said it. Uh, part of the reason that we do this in in this committee is because these trains do help keep all that truck traffic off the road, and we're having you know we have enough time truck tough time with our our pavement resurfacing as it is anyway. So this has always been money well spent. It's spent here. Yeah, it's it spent here. Any other questions or comments about this proposal? Representative Kaczynski. Yes, thank you. Um, I got to say, I kind of fundamentally disagree with this idea of subsidizing a private company. And two things, when with this testimony, I remember asking uh, <clears throat> about how they verified the match on that. And the fellow said that they pay for this all up front and they get then get the money from the state, which makes you wonder, why do they need our money? You know, they have enough to pay for that. And the other thing, I'm involved with trucking. And when you say 37, or it was said 37,000 trucks, uh, trips per year with trucks. Well, if you went down to the Hampton Tolls and sat down there, I bet that's about maybe a day's worth of trucks, if that there. So it sounds like a very large number, but I think, I don't know if it's as impressive as I would think. But at any rate, I'm a new guy here. It's just my impression, and um, I will vote against this. Thank you. Any other comments? Let's include here. Yep. I just, with, with, with all due respect, I think this is an issue because uh, not so much in this budget, but a constant complaint about heavy trucks damaging our roads. I think whatever we could do within reason, as long as the company's going to match or exceed it, to get put more of the freight in rail, which is a lot better way to do it. And this is a public, what we call a public private partnership. And we do these all the time in the state of the That's why I'm, I'm in favor. You know, I'm 
I'm not in favor of it. Um, and I, the reason I'm not, and I don't know how many of you have read it, but the last uh, state rail report was put out, uh, I think in 2010. And at that point in time, it indicated that less than 1% of the freight carried through and into the state of New Hampshire um, goes by rail. And when that report was written, they were basing that on a um, large quantity of that uh, traffic came from the paper mills in the Berlin area, which no longer exists, Merlin and Groveton. Um, and 70% of the rail traffic in and out of the state is the 100 train coal cars that go to the Bull Power Plant on a weekly basis. That amounts to 70% of the 1% handled by rail. So I agree with, with Representative Kaczynski that uh, we're subsidizing a private company and my experience in the North Country, and I don't know about the rest of the state, but in the North Country, the St. Lawrence Railway um, takes rail cars through there about twice a week and they come from Maine they go to Vermont and into Canada, and they never drop any freight in the state of New Hampshire, or to the best of my knowledge, pick any freight up in the state of New Hampshire. It's a pass-through rail system. Um, so I'll be voting against it as well. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Mills. Yes, just one final one. Uh, because both the gentlemen are new on this committee, it has been a number of years since this actually came up. Uh, this has come up before, and in the past, we've had the, and we don't have the, the uh, luxury of having them with us today. We did not anticipate this question would come up. But these two rail lines, and the money that we put towards them, are specifically geared to transportation in New Hampshire. This isn't passed through this one. One was a route actually up into. Uh, Representative McConkie's area, I think it was hauling gravel or something yeah. up there. So this this money has always been for interest interstate, not interstate commerce in New Hampshire. So. Any further questions? Take down the torch with the roll. Representative McConkie. Aye. Clerk votes yes. Representative Samaro. Representative Samaro. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't unmute it, but I just figured out how. I switched to my phone, I say yes. <laughs> Representative Fadolfi. Yes. Representative Newton. Yes. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. Or no. No, or is it here? Uh, go back, Representative. Yeah, I said yes, I'm sorry. Sorry, thank you, I didn't hear that. Representative Kolanski. Representative Thompson. Uh, no. Representative Van de Castillo. Representative Cloutier. Uh, yes. Representative Edgar. Aye. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yeah. Representative Abbott. Yeah, Representative Faulkner. Yes. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassy. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. Yes. Mr. Chair, the vote passes 17 to 2. Thank you. I'm sorry, the motion passes. All right. That will be included. Um, I'd like to take about 15 or 20 minutes to go back through with some of what we did this morning. Um, having heard, and the reason I'm doing this is we do need to get started on a fairly lengthy amendment to House Bill 25. Um, 
Um, meeting like this makes it a little more difficult to get with the LBA and the rest. Um, administrative services. I put an asterisk against line 14, first mitigation to information cloud environment for $5.1 million. Is there any objection to leaving that in as written? Seeing none. Um, we approve reducing um, statewide emergency fund to $1 million. Um, Department of Corrections. We had put an asterisk next to the line and grinder, but that was answered. Is there any other questions about corrections? There was some disagreement under the Department of Education about the bathroom uh, at the DOE, um, but the vote of the committee was to go ahead and add it um, as we go forward, at least on this comparison. I assume that the objections are still there. I'm not trying to change anybody's thoughts. Um, environmental services. We had put an asterisk next to one stop IT system upgrades at, at a little over five million. Any comments on that? Um, Mr. Shea. I, I didn't have a comment to that specifically, Representative Graham, but I was wondering if as you go through if you added a project in House Bill 25, but also added it, a piece of it into the uh, repurposing amount, if you could just mention that to, so I can kind of track. Um, I can go over, I can send you a complete list. That would be great. Yeah, do that, then that's fine. That way, Chris, and trying to do it here, but that in front of me and, and Representative Mills, but I know where all the money came from and I can tell you. Well, if you can send me something after today then that would, or after the meeting, that would be great and I can put something together for the committee. We do something today. Yeah. Um, Representative Jack. Uh, thank you. I'd like to, uh, if we need a motion, I'd like to empower the chairman and Mr. Shea to go back over the decisions we made about where the lapse money is going so that they can do it the, the simplest way rather than do it the way we voted on it. Did you think that we think we need it? Um, it it's going it's to happen anyway. Uh, without objection, we'll take that and Mr. Shea and I will work on it and provide it to the committee yeah, on where the money is coming from. Um, I don't want to try to do this in a, in a vacuum, even though it seems like I've been running this railroad all day. Um, no, no. Representative Evo. Um, so we're back on the DES uh, budget. Um, so I, I looked this up we, to, in order to get the 350,000 for the coastal flooding, we need 188. I'm sorry if I had the number wrong before. There's two ways, I guess, that we could do that. I mean, this is something that I would like to discuss with the committee. There's two ways we could do it. One is to simply reduce the one-stop IT budget by 108 and put it toward the coastal. The other option is that um, in the past, we've given committees some, I mean, um, departments some latitude to move money back and forth. And so one other thing we could do without hitting the bottom line is just to give DES the option to use some of the IT money for the coastal flooding if that was something that they felt that they could do. And um, again, this wouldn't hit our bottom line. It would accomplish uh, things that, or help to accomplish some of the things that our coastal folks uh, are interested in doing that clearly is another economic engine for the um, for the state and I also took what representative Thompson had said to heart about all the work that's been done down there so I don't know what the committee's pleasure is but um, I would propose doing something like that thank you mr. chairman and if I could address representative evil uh, but my first question is for you, Mr. Chairman. 
Had, hadn't we penciled in this morning a number of somewhere around 162,000? Yes. Yeah. So it's that what she is suggesting is I, yeah, coming I, up with the other 188,000, that would be needed to, to what they think they need to, to go forward fully with it. I am, um, if, if I could, Mr. Chairman, continue. I, I'm in, I am um, having not spoken much in favor of this. I'm more than willing to go forward with the $164,000 figure. Um, what, wherever that number was, we penciled in this morning. Um, the commissioner talked about uh, that they'll spend what they can, and that is so close to that number. Um, my second, my second is on the um, the five million dollars for the one stop. Uh, I've had time to reflect on that. Uh, I'm not so much in taking away the money from that because I believe it's a needed program. What I asked the chairman to do is, uh, I'm wondering if we could footnote that or make that appropriation. A lot of times they have to spend a lot of that money up front is my understanding. I'm not as well versed as Representative Jack about that, but I would like to see them report to uh, a capital budget overview when they hit the $3 million figure on progress made with that and the modules and then um, that they will report to us going forward every time they spend a million dollars of that. Uh, and I don't see that we're going to be in their way, but I think when we're spending $5 million, I think the proper vehicle is oversight with capital budget overview. So I would be in favor of keeping that, that appropriation and I would, uh, and I would, uh, not be in favor of going from the 160 something to 180 something. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My feeling is, uh, and, and I use the one step system on a regular basis, as I know uh, Representative McConaughey does. Um, as far as subsurface goes, I think it, it's working well now, better than it ever has. Um, Promises have been made over the years to us as installers and designers that there were going to be functions that were going to be in there years ago. Um, self inspection system that's never appeared. Um, and uh, I think $5 million is a lot of money to give them to. Uh, without some specific goals in mind. And I didn't hear any specifics from the commissioner. Again, I didn't ask him for any, but uh, I didn't hear any specifics on how exactly this is going to improve the overall system. And that seems like a lot of money to commit to something. I would support uh, Representative McConkey's uh, idea of having some oversight as this money is spent. Well, and I think that, and in all honesty, um, having sat on this committee and on Capital Budget Overview Committee, I think we need probably to strengthen the language for all of the agencies to come back in and tell us how they're spending the millions yeah, that particularly are giving, giving to them um, on a periodic basis. Some of them it should be quarterly, and some of them it should be semi-annually. Um, but at least get um, a report of where the money is, so that all of a sudden we don't have five million dollars being lapsed at the next fight by any. Um, or, or at least we would know that it's coming and, and the reasons why. But we're still on the what Representative Evil suggested of raising. The um, dollar amount for the flood control um, um, and commented by Representative Portonki. Are there any other comments? And I know where Representative Edgar is coming down, uh, but Mike, you're up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, John. Um, I uh, obviously uh, I'm in favor of uh, any <laughs> motions to. Uh, to increase the, uh, the coastal flooding monitoring um, issue right here. And uh, 
Believe me, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, is a minimum, I hope, when we get we're done that we can get in that range to 100 and, you know, 61, 80, 8, 90. Um, I think it'd be, it, there, there's, a, there's an awful lot of support for this uh, on the seacoast and, and, and up to Piscuatica. And uh, if, if we can take it out, you know, whack a little bit off a of one stop, that would be good. Or if there's some other way of doing it. And uh, I appreciate any, any consideration on it. Um, but, I, you know, I realize that this, you know, this really is a tight budget right now, but I, I hope we could find that much. Thank you. Any other comments on this? Can I just ask? Sure. Are we, are we trying to add another 889 to this 161? Yes. yes. That's for a total that's of, the, yes. That's, that's the suggestion. 340 something. Yeah. Actually, the figure is 188,110. Not that we're precise, but no. Well, we've only got 161,890 in there from the last month, so that's the yeah. exact figure we're talking about. I have some idea of how this process works out, and I can tell you that with $161,000, they're not going to be able to accomplish yeah, so you what they like need to, to accomplish. You, you would like to see it? I'd like to see it fully funded. At their request. But do we have a motion on the floor? I'd like to, you know, I don't know, represent evil. I'm no, she did not make a motion, she just kind of threw the idea out there. Okay. Um, I mean, so we put allocated this is from last money this morning, hundred about one hundred and sixty-one thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars. Yeah. Correct. And I believe as I understood Representative Evil, she wanted to add to the same program for coastal flooding another one hundred and eighty. $188,110 to be taken, if I understood her correctly, she can correct me, to be taken from the DES one stop IT system upgrade figure of the $5,013,500. Is that correct? If I could, uh, that that was an option that I put out there. Um, I, I mean, we could try a motion, I'd, I'd make that. Um, the other alternative I had mentioned is simply writing into the bill that we give uh, DES the ability to switch money from between IT and the coastal flooding for that 188 if they wanted to. Um, but if, the, if I'm willing to make a motion if the chair thinks that yes. it's the time. It's the time, Representative Beeble. Okay. Um, I move that, I may not have all the details here. I move that the uh, DES one stop um, IT budget amount of, sorry, if somebody can help me here, I'm trying to find the amount. Is it five? $13,500 would reduce by $1,000. I'm sorry, $188,110 for that money to be allocated to the, what are we putting in? Uh, coastal the coastal flooding program. Yep. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Clerk, for helping me. That is, that's my motion. Basically, that the one-stop budget item be reduced by 188, whatever Mr. Mills said, thousand. Mm -hmm. Um, to be used for the coastal flooding program. But second, I'll, I'll second the motion. Oh, okay. Any discussion on that to reduce that one stop fractionally um, by approximately 188,000 and uh, to be used for the coastal flooding model? Yes. I would just say that the commissioner said himself that if we ended up cutting money out of the uh, yeah. one-stop budget, he'd make it work. That's why I don't think anybody's going to argue here. Yeah. <laughs> you never said in front of the committee so you could use less. <laughs> I just want to just I just want to be clear in my own head. So uh, this morning we talked about uh, taking laps money of one hundred and sixty-one. Some a thousand, and now we're talking about then finding another hundred eighty-eight million 
$180,000, excuse me, of, of money that the, uh, hadn't been brought forward. So we're somewhere around uh, $320,000. Uh, 188 and change of new funding. Yeah, of new funding, we are reauthorizing that. So what I'm just saying is a project that was on the want list that wasn't brought forward now going to appropriate uh, three hundred thirty thousand dollars too. So it, it's not that we're just putting one hundred eighty-eight thousand away from one. We're we're putting we're spending over three hundred thousand combined, three hundred fifty thousand. So that will be the that will be the reason I am uh, I'm supportive of the, the money this morning, and I'll be voting against this. Any other questions? Roll roll, please. Representative McConkey. Everybody clear on what we're voting on? I see no buddy shaking their head. Okay. Representative McConkey. Nay. Chair votes no. Representative Samaro. Representative Savero. Representative Adolfi. No. Representative Newton. No. Representative Blasek. Representative Boards. Representative Boards. Representative Kaczynski. No. Representative Kolanski. Representative Thompson. Yeah. Representative Van de Castile. Representative Cloutier. Yes. Representative Edgar. Yay. Representative Ebel. Yes. Representative Jack. Yes. Representative Abbott. Representative Faulkner. Yes. Representative Newman. Yes. Representative Grassi. Yes. Representative Peterson. Yes. Representative Query. Yes. Representative Bunker. Yes. Chairman Graham. No. The motion passes 11 to 6. I'm sure that we will talk about this at the end. But, <laughs> um, but for now, um, that motion passes and will be included in the next spreadsheet that we do. Um, wow. We shall go on. Um, Health and Human Services. Anybody wish to change anything in that? Seeing no hands. Uh, information technology, we okay with respect changes. Same with judicial branch. Anything about those two? Uh, the Commission, is there funds other or point of service uh, credit card? We made a change in the military affairs and veteran services by utilizing. Um, so last money and four hundred fifteen thousand dollars to leverage. Uh, I have six hundred thousand dollars of uh, additional federal money uh, for statewide federations of readiness systems, and all of the rest on here is federal money. Natural cultural resources. Um, we increased roofing and repair to 1.35 million from the 1.2 that the governor had proposed. Any questions on that? These standards and training remain the same, as did the veterans home. Safety, uh, Department of Safety, uh, there were, we left the 750,000 the governor talked about, and we also then repurposed the laps that we approved uh, which was fire academy money. On Department of Transportation, under general funds, we 
approved there $1.72022. And we added the two railroads, one at $250,000, the other at uh, $500,000. Um, we will look and see what that does to our bottom line. And then in section two, which is highway funded, DOT, we approved the amendment that was drafted in my name for changing how they spend some of that money and it increased it about a million dollars. Um, you all should have that. Um, that, that was it. Um, university system, um, we did not change. And where did I miss the community college system? Um, we left what the governor proposed and added $1 million for critical maintenance. Um, that's all of the agencies. I will work with Mr. Shea to come up with a new uh, spreadsheet. If you have art and get that out to people. Um, I do not have right now, I have asked for um, two days next week um, with uh, a Zoom license. Um, one is uh, start with the work session, make sure we're all in agreement, and then uh, have an executive session on an amendment which takes into consideration everything that we have discussed and changed and changed at the next work session if we change anything. I would like to come out of this with a consensus on the bottom line. When we finish, we may not all agree on any given project, but um, we are trying to do the best for the state. Um, I will try also to get some more definitions before our next session um, on what strings or how um, the money that is coming um, under plan is going to be handled. So I think that that is an important thing to know. You know, if there's going to be one or two large projects, a whole bunch of small. It's all those things that are unknown at this point. But I think that we need, as a committee and as a general court, need to weigh in on what is going on. Do I have anything else from anybody who is here? Representative Jack, I think you maybe did it. If we're going to have a session on, it's the sense of the committee that we spend the federal funds on, I'd like to consider adding the uh, Women's Prison Trades Building as one of those projects. Okay. And I would certainly support that. Now, why don't we do it this way? Because it's been a long day. Uh, we're going to have another work session before the finalization of the amendment. Everybody spend the next few days thinking about going back through the agency presentations um, and what we've heard, what we know, and say, if federal money becomes available, this is the project I would like to see done. Um, and don't... Uh, you know, because I, I look at things like there's the, the leaky roof at the Berlin men's prison. Uh, that would probably be a nice thing to fix. It's a million dollars plus. Uh, little things like that. Um, I am sure that several people will talk about more money for the um, community college system or other, or other agencies. And um, we shall see. But look through their presentations, look through this book, because um, there's lots of unfunded things that were priorities for the, that. And if nothing else, we can at least make our desires known to the Senate and to um, the governor or whomever will um, be receiving this money. Um, so if you can do that, I think that Trying to do it right now, it's going, it's quarter of three in the afternoon. We've been here since 9 15, 9 30. Um, we're just not, I'm not as bright as I was 10 years ago, but, uh, <laughs> you uh, but definitely not 10 hours ago. Uh, so, is there anything else? 
Yeah. So we're going to come in Tuesday for a work session. You expect to come in probably Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah. If I can work that, and if I if we can get the work session done early enough on Tuesday, um, so that they can start working on the the amendment. Some of the amendments they could, they may be able to start with, um, you know, which lapses are being dropped in those kinds of things. But uh, it's going to depend on on us working. Tuesday morning, get it done, um, and then let the amendment get drafted because that is what we actually need to hold on. It's, it's, everybody yeah, right. it, yeah. it's like any other bill, it's an up or down from the committee and goes to the floor. Okay, and we're starting at 9 30 on Zoom. Uh, if I'm on Tuesday. Okay. Hopefully, I don't have. I tried to get it scheduled with this calendar, but we're told we don't have. There was not access to the Zoom uh, licenses when the calendar had to go to bed. Um, so I will be working on that the, the later today and tomorrow okay. before the calendar. So the and, and, week goes back. and it is your intent. I mean, hopefully we can do it Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, and not have to come back unless you said something, if necessary, the following Monday. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and that puts it really tight because. That is the deadline week, and there are, I think, uh, 400 some odd bills that still have to make it through committees and either be retained or go on to the calendar. Okay. So, so your intent is try to wrap things up by Thursday. Just yeah, my intent is next week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Just so everybody knows, um, it, um, it is a little harder with with. I mean. Members of the LBA not being in the building, not being in the room with us. They are doing a phenomenal job um, doing it this way. Take a while, Mr. Shea. Um, but um, it, it is helpful, and and but that's why I'd like to get it done as early Tuesday as possible. We give them as much time. And he and I will be in contact over the next couple of days, um, trying to iron out everything that we decided. So it makes sense to him and the drafters. Uh, it's very important that the drafters know what they're doing. Okay. And one other thing for the sake of the committee, hopefully we get a, a, a draft amendment done by late Tuesday so that we can look it over. Uh, because I think I know from the past, you and I have sometimes we've had some mistakes that we've had to come in for yeah. special meeting just to, to correct And them. that's why I said it's required for the following Monday. Okay. Um, right. But if we meet Tuesday, um, agree on everything. I don't think that they'll have uh, the draft ready Tuesday. I, I'll have to talk. I'm not going to talk. Okay, all right. Okay, no, you're not it's, sure. It's, uh, I'm just not sure. Okay, all right. Um, Representative Jack. I, I think so, unless I get told otherwise. Um, now, let me tell you what the speaker said to the chairs and vice chairs on Monday morning. It's in the um, calendar. We will be meeting the 7th, 8th, and 9th of April at the Veteran Sports Complex. His intention is to start at 9 o'clock each morning and go till 6 or 7 in the evening. Um, as I said, we've got hundreds of bills that we've got to get through. So if you have any friends who want to debate House Bill 25, please ask them not to, or, or make it one-on-one, -on -one, be against somebody. Um, no, well, it's it's just the 400, yeah, even yeah. if you only take three minutes each, uh, each side, you start running into time, and there are um, obviously some issues that are, are more passionate than the capital budget that people would want to talk about. Um, but we have to get our work done those three days. And I know that the majority of the minority leaders agreed to suspend uh, changing the, the deadlines and changing crossover date. Uh, but that's about as far as we can go because the Senate still has to get the bills. And we do have two bills from the Senate. Uh, I'll schedule those at some point. <laughs> Probably after the night, I mean, 
but uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for new members. And I, I'm uh, appalled that we haven't had the time to spend each other, to look each other in the eye. But the, the history of this committee has been, if we're going to thrash this out, and I think we're very close to being done. So I don't mean thrash was way off base. We need, we need to come together on Tuesday, figure this out. And as the chairman alluded, we'll come out with a opinion. We never, we, it's, you can do it, but we, we would prefer not, again, with the history of our committee, not to have a member speak against another member of this committee on the floor. We're one of the few committees that is united and, um, and we will come together on Tuesday and I'm hoping we can take care of it then. And finally, I heard, Mr. Chairman, that the, that the intent of the speaker is to take up the, the budget bills, which I assume would mean House bill on the first day, we meet them Wednesday, because I think it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It is That's Wednesday, what I heard. And I, I see Thursday, Friday, what we told the chairs on Monday morning was there will probably be three parts of the calendar with the must-pass bills on uh, Wednesday. Right. And I, I make the assumption that that's one, two, and 25 because they're money bills. And there's probably a couple others in other committees that people think of are, are critical. But um, I would not be surprised if we weren't the third or fourth motion. I, I think we should be first, frankly. I would suggest <laughs> I, that's what I did when I was, I asked the speaker uh, to go first and had the opportunity he did it for me. If I can get away with it, if you can get it up, the uh, committee to agree, I put it on the consent calendar. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I can't do that. But the house can, rules. I, can, I, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, I think it's probably of Representative Jack. On the capital budget lapse extension worksheet sure. on, on, on items 142 and 143, I don't claim to understand this or the wording of it. I wondered if. It's uh, two items on the river turning basin. Was there lapse money there? We, co we continue, continue to, uh, there's, not, there's money in those, but what this does is it was uh, approved in prior plans. When the, the congressional delegation finally got uh, the Corps of Engineers off the dime, um, the cost was higher, and that's why uh, Ms. Marconi had to come in for an additional 1.7. Oh. So there, to what was given before. Okay, I didn't get that from the conversation. Well, that day. sometimes uh, Ms. Marconi gets excited. Uh, <laughs> he's a great harbor master. He is a good harbor master. Any other comments or questions before I close out this work session? Say not. Uh, committee is adjourned to the call of the chair. Very good. Thanks, John. Thank you. Have a great day.